Okay. So, I've been having a lot of issues lately with... things. About four months ago, I had a near-death experience. I had a cardiac issue where my heart pretty much just stopped doing what it was supposed to do, and I collapsed in the middle of the grocery store. It was a seemingly random attack. It was completely unexpected, and I've always been told that I was healthy, so really there was no way anyone would have ever expected me to have this issue. But I did. I was walking with my wife around the store, we were talking about what to have for dinner, and, in her words, I went pale, smiled, and literally fell face first into the pineapples. I was lucky that there actually happened to be a couple of paramedics at the store when this happened. Like, beyond lucky. As I had literal minutes before I wouldn't have been able to have been revived. They were able to get me back quickly, and we all took an impromptu ride in an ambulance to the ER, where the doctors worked some amazing miracles on me to keep me alive. I was in the hospital for a while. They kept me to make sure that it wasn't likely to happen again, and we went through all the consultations and tests to see why it happened at all. Without getting too far into it, I was basically told that I had a 90% chance of it never happening again, but that other 10% was a big deal to them, and I now have medications, and have to frequently check in with the cardiologist to make sure that I don't circle the drain anytime soon. Ever since I was released from the hospital, though, I've noticed things that are not the same for me. I've noticed that there are things that have been changed slightly, and it's actually been weighing pretty heavy on my mind. I don't know if this is personal Mandela effect things, or glitches, or just some sort of reality or timeline shift, but here we go. The first thing that I noticed was the insurance company that my wife and I go through. The name of the company that we use is Farmers Insurance. However, that is not what I remember it being. I very distinctly remember the company being called The Farmers Insurance Company. My wife says that the company has always just been Farmers Insurance, and has never had the the or company in the name, but I know this is false, at least for me. I've even seen the commercials in this reality where they have the jingle, and it's almost the same as the one I remember. In this reality, however, it's just, we are farmers. But I remember the jingle saying, we are the farmers. Which, to me, makes more sense. If you say the sentence out loud, it makes more sense to say that you are the farmer and not just, you are farmer. But that's just my opinion. Anyways, I remember the company being the farmers insurance company and no one else does. The second thing that I remember is actually a bit more personal, and not on a corporate level, and that is a local coffee shop that my wife and I like to go to. There's this little cafe that is the cutest little place, and it's owned by a local family. We used to go there every weekend before the accident. I very specifically remember that the name of the cafe was The Cardinal coffee house, and I remember that their specialty, the Cardinal, was basically a mocha with a ghost pepper syrup in it to make it spicy. I remember talking to the owner about it, and asking why the store's namesake drink was that, and she said that it was because people associate heat with red, and Cardinals were red. She then also said that Cardinals were, quote-unquote, spicy little birds, Basically, that they were kind of mean when it came to their territory, so it just made sense to make their drink a little spicy, too. I loved her explanation, and I loved the drink. The ghost pepper worked so well with the chocolate. Now, none of this is apparently true. The cafe is called The Bluebird, and their specialty namesake drink is incredibly boring. It's basically a vanilla latte with honey in it, and it's terrible. I actually talked to the owner about it, 
and I asked her if they still had the ghost pepper syrup for the coffee, and she seemed genuinely confused on what I was talking about. I'm actually incredibly sad, because it was such a fun combo and I really liked it, but it never existed, according to everyone else. The last thing that I think is worth mentioning actually happened at work. I work in IT, and we have a fairly tight-knit team, so I know all the guys that work on my team pretty well. Obviously, I was out for a while with my medical stuff, and I'm super thankful that they were willing to let me start back up when I was feeling better, and that the company had decided to allow us to stay remote for the foreseeable future which made working that much easier for me. However, when I finally got back into working, I noticed that one of the guys on our team was seemingly absent from the meetings. He was one of the network guys named Chuck. He was seemingly no longer part of the company. Now, these things do happen all the time, and since I was gone for quite a while, I assumed he had found other work and moved on. It wasn't likely that he got fired, as he was good at his job, and he was in good standing with the company. Then, about three weeks into me being back, we have a Zoom call meeting where they all requested that we put our cameras on. The meeting starts, and the head of the IT department says that he wants to introduce a new member of our team, a guy named Chuck, that is going to be part of our networking team. I was completely confused. The guy on camera was the guy that I remembered working there. At first, I thought that maybe he had left and come back, and that they were just being cheeky. But everyone was being genuine. This was Chuck's first day, and nobody knew him. I even asked my direct manager after that meeting if that was the same Chuck that worked for us prior, and he said that no one named Chuck had worked in IT before. I just said that I must have confused him with someone else, and I let it go, but I know this guy, and I know that he worked for the company before, at least in another timeline. These are just some of the things that I've noticed that have happened, and honestly, I'm pretty messed up with all this. It's incredibly stressful remembering things that seemingly never happened or existed and I'm struggling to cope with it. Unfortunately, I think I'm just going to have to accept things for what they are now, because I don't think that there's any way for me to ever go back. I have a fairly strange story about something that happened to me when I was a kid and it was the first time something like this had ever happened to me. I was around 10 years old, and we had just moved into a new house in a city a state or two away, because my mom had taken a promotion at her job, and they wanted to transfer her to the branch that was out here. Obviously, I was a bit devastated as I had to leave the school that I had been attending for most of my childhood, as well as leave behind my two friends that I'd known since I was a baby. My parents were adamant that I would just make new friends, so I had to suck it up and accept that we were moving. A few weeks after we had moved in, we were walking around the block to introduce ourselves to the neighbors, and a few houses down was a man that worked for the same company as my mom, so basically one of her new co-workers. He had a son named Chris, which was my name as well, but I was Chris with the K. Not relevant, but as a kid, it was the most important thing to me. For some reason, I never really considered Chris to be a good friend, but he was definitely an acquaintance of mine. I ended up being better friends with some of the other kids on the block that I actually met through Chris. After a few months... Chris and I weren't doing much together, but we still talked whenever we saw each other, so we both knew that the other was still alive. There was one day during the summer that a group of us decided we wanted to go swimming down at what was essentially a small pond with a dock. 
it was on land that was owned by one of the other guys, Johnny. So we were allowed to mess around in it as much as we wanted to. Altogether, it was about seven of us that headed down to the pond to swim. We were all just swimming and having a good time, mostly just running and doing cannonballs off the dock and into the water. When it was my turn to jump into the water, I got up on the dock and prepared to run. But, then, near the edge, I ended up slipping and fell backwards, hitting my head on the post. When this happened, I remembered slipping, and basically falling in slow motion. Then, my head hit the wood, and I remember there just being this sharp pain. The next thing I can recall is falling into the water and not being able to move. Like, at all. I was staring up at the surface of the water, unable to close my eyes, just thinking about how I was dead. Like I said, I was only 10 or 11 at the time, so I really should have had no frame of reference for what death felt like, but I knew right then and there that I was either dying or had died, and my brain just hadn't powered off yet. I could feel that my lungs were empty, and I remember the taste of water as it filled my mouth. Then, I remember seeing Chris swimming down towards me with his hands out, like he was my savior. And then it all went black. When I woke up, I was lying on the ground outside the pond with Johnny's parents leaning over me, and the boys all panicking in the background. When I came to, I literally gasped for air, and I remember coughing really hard and spitting out a bunch of water, and I could hear Johnny's dad asking me if I could hear him. I nodded that I could, and just kind of laid there staring up at the sky and watching the clouds. The other boys had gone from panicking to celebrating, I'm guessing because I didn't die. <laughs> I remember sitting up and asking what happened. Johnny said that I had slipped and hit my head, and then fell into the water. It slowly came back, and I remember finishing off what he said with, Oh yeah, and then Chris jumped in to save me. I then looked around to thank him, and I realized he wasn't there. I asked where he went, and they all kind of just looked at me. Johnny laughed and said, Dude, you're Chris. To which I said, Yeah, no, Chris with a CH, the other Chris that was here. Nobody had any idea who I was talking about. They all just kind of stared at me and looked around confused. Johnny's dad said that my parents were on their way, and that I should probably get looked at to make sure I didn't cause damage to my head. I nodded along and got up slowly to sit on the front porch waiting for them. On the way to the hospital, I actually asked my mom if she remembered Chris. I don't know why I felt compelled to ask, but he was the son of her coworker, so she would surely know who he was. To my surprise, she said that she didn't know anyone named Chris other than me. I told her, no, the Chris with the CH, the one that's your coworker's son. We met him right after we moved into the house, when we were introducing ourselves to the neighbors. My mom then told me that none of her coworkers lived on our block, and that, to the best of her knowledge, none of them had a son named Chris. So, to this day, I am the only person that remembers my friend Chris, the one that I met when I was ten, the one that was my mom's coworker's son. Nobody else in my family, and none of the other childhood friends knew who Chris with a CH was despite him being the person that saved my life, and someone that I know that I hung out with on several occasions. I know that he existed. I know that he and I were decent enough friends. And I know that he jumped into the water to save me when I was drowning. But yet, he seemingly never did. I have nothing to prove that he did exist, unfortunately other than the memories in my head. 
I will say that losing a friend to the Matrix, so to speak, specifically one that saved me that day, is the most painful childhood memory that I have. And while he doesn't seem to exist in this timeline, I will never forget that day, and the fact that he saved me. Hello to all who are listening. This account of mine is 100% true, and I felt the need to share, well, because while these events are freaky, they're also kind of cool, give or take. Lately, some very strange things have been happening to me, but the thing is that I think it's because of something I did. I've always been a believer in manifestation and changing your timeline. If you haven't heard of the two-cup method, it's a method where you fill two cups with water and write down everything about your current reality on the first glass. Example, current job, relationship, feelings about your current situation, etc. And then, on the second glass, you write down the desired reality that you want. Example, I want to get paid more, be more successful, have a better love life, achieve this and that, and so on. Then, you meditate for a minute and pour the water from your current reality glass into your desired reality glass, and drink the entire thing. It doesn't need to be a huge cup, like it's a forced drinking situation, but just a normal sized glass. Water is known to be a great conduit for energy and when you meditate your intentions into the glass and drink it, your energy aligns with those desires. This might not be something that some believe in, but from my own experience, it's real. Well, I did just that. Twice. Both within the same week, as I had forgotten to add some stuff the first time. I only did this a few months ago, and in the span of three short months, it all happened. Again, I only did this cup method twice, just days apart, within the same week. I wrote on my desired reality cup, my relationship further blossoms. It happened. My boyfriend and I are closer by leagues. I'm more successful in my profession. It happened. I've improved a ton on my work. I'm motivated, which happened. My lifetime idol in my profession messaged me admiring my work and followed me, which made me not only cry for about three hours, but it motivated me permanently. I have a best friend. It happened. Yes, a simple friend of mine and I grew to become each other's very best friends. We even used to butt heads and honestly not even like each other that much, but... We grew to become like sisters, and we trust each other with our lives. We even safely know each other's deepest secrets and feelings. I'm healthier, which happened. I went to a doctor's appointment, convinced several things were wrong, and I've been completely healthy. I also have been craving healthier foods. I've been taking more walks and have oddly been way more hungry and have eaten so much food without gaining a pound. Like, my metabolism sped up. So, there's the proof of that. But these haven't been the only things that have happened. I've started to experience really obvious and unexplainable glitches. These have been occurring randomly and don't even pertain to what I listed on my cup. Not manifestation stuff, but very real glitches. Incident 1. The first incident happened, I believe, one to two days after I did the method. The second time I did it, not the first. I live on the fourth and top story of my apartment building, and I have a balcony. My view is that of the parking lot, and a bunch of houses on the streets, so I'm always either people watching, seeing what other people are up to, I promise not in a creepy way, or just looking outside. There's this one house in particular that this older man lives in and it's closest to my building. 
I was out on my balcony enjoying the evening when I see him pull up in his red car. I've lived here for over three years now, and it has always been red with the specific sticker on his front bumper. I looked away for not even ten seconds, and when I looked back, his car was gray. I froze and just said out loud to myself, Hey yo, what the frick? I started thinking, oh well, maybe he just pulled out and someone else came home. And then I remembered that he lives alone, and that the now gray car has the same bumper sticker on it, the one that's always been there. So it was the same car. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. It was also parked in the same spot, so it's not possible for him to have walked out, as he walks fairly slow anyways, so definitely not, and then gotten in his car and pulled away in under 10 seconds in order for a different car to pull into that spot. It's just not possible. After looking at the car with one eyebrow raised for what was probably three minutes straight, I realized I had to use the restroom. So, I headed inside for a few minutes. As I made my way back to my balcony chair, I looked back at the car, and it was red again. My eyes widened and I said, Okay, no. What the actual hell? Again, but even louder. A neighbor even looked up at me confused, and her facial expression was like, What? I'm pretty sure that my eye even started twitching for a minute because my brain felt like it was being deceived. Up to this day, i still never been able to explain it, nor have I told anyone else other than my best friend and my boyfriend out of fear that people might think I'm crazy, even though I know what I saw. Incident 2 Oddly, this incident regards the same house and has to do with cars again. One night, maybe a few weeks later, I was out on my balcony again, as per usual, enjoying the nice evening and pretty sky. Again, I see this same neighbor as the incident before pull up into his driveway, except this time a black car with a woman inside pulled in behind him. He parked in his usual spot, and she parked on the side of his house, as the driveway spans there. I saw them both get out of their cars and walk inside together. I got a notification on my phone and looked away, about 15 seconds later, and her car was gone, and his car was in the spot that she had just parked in. How the heck is this possible, and what the heck is going on with this house? There's no way that in only 15 seconds this second incident could have happened. Incident 3 I have three tattoos. One on my left ribcage, one on my right ribcage, and a newer one on my right arm. This incident just recently happened, so every detail from this occurrence is still pretty vivid. I'm 28, and obviously my long-term partner is going to see my ribcage area. You surely get what I mean. Well, one evening about two weeks ago as I was changing, my boyfriend, let's call him W, took notice of the tattoo on my left ribcage and raised his eyebrow confused. I looked at him and said, what's wrong? He put his book down. When did you get that tattoo? I was taken aback. W, I've had this tattoo since two years before we even met. He looked really surprised. What? I've never seen it or noticed it before. I finished putting on my shirt and got into the bed. I looked him straight in the eyes and said, We've been together for four years now. That's a long time. And you've seen that area essentially the entire time we've been dating. I know that you've seen it. His eyes widened with confusion. Dana, I swear I've never seen that before. I know you got your arm tattoo recently, and I genuinely thought this one was just another tattoo that you got. Don't get me wrong, I like it, and I don't mind all your tattoos, but I've just never seen that one. I put my hand on his shoulder and cozied up to him and asked, W, are you sure you're okay? He put his hand on my lap and looked me deep in my eyes in complete seriousness and said, I promise, I'm perfectly okay. 
So I continued. I don't get it, though. You've literally seen me without my shirt on almost every day for four years straight. You've seen me in many bathing suits, too. He shrugged. I know, but I have no idea. I know I would have 1000% noticed that by now. That's why I'm so taken aback. It was a bit much for me. Actually, probably for the both of us. And at that point, I realized that we were likely not going to find an explanation. At least, not right then. Even if we talked for hours about it, so I just calmly said, okay, and let it go. And then we watched a show that I liked on TV to forget about what had just happened. We continued to watch the show until we both fell asleep. We both brushed it off and haven't spoken about it again since. I think I accidentally shifted to a reality where I'm with a different W. Or perhaps in this new reality, the other me that was here shifted somewhere else and now I'm here. Either he shifted or I did. Either way, if we're coming to realistic terms, there's really no plausible or logical explanation for this, considering he is also insanely observant of everything in general, too. I've had this specific tattoo for six and a half years now, and I've been in this relationship with W for four. So, yeah. When I shifted, maybe the universe brought a new W to mine, too, and we met halfway? I think I possibly shifted to a new one, and his consciousness unknowingly shifted into the same one that I did. I mean, things have also been so much better these last few months than ever before. We had a great relationship already, but something changed. Something has shifted so positively between us, to the point where an engagement is now soon in the cards. I'm not sure what's happening with it. I don't mind it, but this incident kind of freaked me out. If any of you have any other theories, please, I would love to know, and I'll read the comments if this ends up getting posted. Then, Incident 4. My bedroom air vent is now a foot further towards the door, and I've noticed other small changes, such as my smoke detector moving a few feet to a different spot on the ceiling and a new one in the hallway right outside of the guest bathroom, and maintenance would have notified me via email and a written letter, but they didn't. I have many more incidents, but these are a few that really stand out. Again, these things have been super cool because the shifting is working out every day, but it's also freaky because of these external glitches that continue to occur, and will likely continue to occur. I guess I'm late to the party on this one. I'd like to share my side of things on the For the Loom story. Personally, outside of curiosities like the Berenstain Bears, me, I've personally thought most of this was hogwash. As a huge Star Wars fan, I remember clearly it being, no, I am your father, with Luke, I am your father, basically just used as a marketing phrase. I remember C-3PO's leg being silver. I remember most of these things correctly. I do remember it being Berenstein Bears, but it wasn't a big enough part of my life to make me start becoming paranoid or anything. When I was a kid, my family lived in Alvaton, Kentucky. My dad worked at Fruit of the Loom. It felt like everything revolved around this company when I was young. My dad worked as an applications manager. He'd bring home the IBM ThinkPads, Palm Pilots, all sorts of cool technology that seemed light years ahead of the time to my elementary through middle school aged kid mind. We had tons of company family functions. He would bring home clothing. Needless to say, the Fruit of the Looms logo was a huge part of my mind. I remember thinking the cornucopia was a loom, and distinctly remember my dad correcting me on that while laughing, and teaching me what it actually was. I also remember doodling the logo while I was in class, 
and making the cornucopia as a bunch of spirals. I just found out about this Mandela effect this morning, and I texted my dad, who has now long moved on from the company. I texted him the logo with the cornucopia in it, and said, You worked there. Do you not remember this as their logo? The response I got was, I did and do remember it. I then called him and he asked why we were talking about something like this. I told him how I was watching the X Games this weekend, which was sponsored by them, and noticing the logo had it removed. After going onto the internet and realizing it apparently never had the cornucopia in it at all, he got very defensive immediately, as if someone was calling him a liar and said, What do you mean it wasn't in the logo? I have things in storage with that logo stitched on it. I know I saw that thing every day for years. I explained to him what the Mandela effect was, which I don't think he quite understands, but the logo thing got him very worked up. He's apparently still friends with a couple of former workers on Facebook. He's going to reach out to them today to see if they remember the same thing. To be quite honest with you, this is one of those freak-out moments for my life. I can legitimately say without a doubt that this logo used to be different. It's bothering me probably more than I'd ever thought something like this would. It's like being told your parent's name suddenly is something different. I have no reason to remember this cornucopia being there. I didn't even know what the damned thing was until my father corrected me. Those are burned in childhood memories that I know existed. Not just, I folded the laundry so I know. I remember large models of the logo at family events. I remember sitting in the damned cornucopia that they had. God, the more I think about it, the more it feels like a huge prank. I'll post with updates, if any, but thanks for hearing out my first post here. The OP then added an update to their post in the comments, and I will include that here. I'll quickly go over my call with him last night. His coworkers still have yet to get back to him, the one that he's talked to in the past and usually gets back to him within a few days. I asked what years he was there. He said he was there from 1990 to 1998. His friends on Facebook included two bosses and two coworkers. He's not been able to find any personal items yet from the time period with any logo on them, and we talked about this at length. Before the internet was widely used, there was no outside connectivity, at least with Fruit of the Loom during this period of time. Thus, the use of letterhead on project forms, memos, etc. was not a common practice like it is today. He did find a couple of memos that he kept, again, not emails, and there wasn't a letterhead on it for him to reference. I guess there was a person there that every time he would push out an update, the whole system would go down. So, they made a joke memo for him to use that basically said, I'm about to run program whatever, so get ready for it. Or something to that effect. He's found some items from the time period, but again, none with any logos on them. He did express that the company went through several hands, both while he was there and afterwards. He distinctly remembers that while he was there, he remembers at least once the cornucopia going away for a period of time. Apparently, this was a very stressful time to work there. Clothing in general was just starting to be outsourced to India at the time, and there was a large amount of pressure from Haynes. There were many times, especially during the course of these buyout transitions, where everyone thought they were going to lose their jobs. He described the office as very barren in terms of branding. There was a logo outside that was small and one inside, but the offices were generally devoid of any branding. Branding largely was seen on the product itself or during the family events, which, to be fair, was everywhere. 
again, the logo wasn't pushed out there on everything to the same respect that it is today. And he made it very clear that Fruit of the Loom today is a very different company now than when he was there. He's still very adamant about the cornucopia, and has distinct memories of it. He also described several other in-house brands that he was in charge of. One was a brand specifically to be sent to screen printers who made their own custom shirts. I guess, at least back then, they never would dare ship out Fruit of the Loom branded shirts to these people, as they thought back then that it would cheapen the image of their brand. They didn't make it very public at all that they owned these other sister brands. He did have photos from family events, but all of our family photos went to my mother in their divorce. I haven't talked to her for nearly ten years now, and neither has he, outside of court appearances. So that's basically a lost avenue. My call with him was earlier than anticipated. Questions only started to roll in that I requested after the call was already completed, so I do apologize for that. When he said he would call me at 9 p.m., I honestly forgot about the three-hour time difference and was taken off guard when he called at 6. One last point that I would like to make. He is now 60, so this all happened in his 40s, i.e. this was well into his career and wasn't something that happened to him when he was young. He made it a point to note that he was old enough to respect and take note of aspects of the company, such as his branding and he wouldn't have taken it so casually. He was fairly high up in the company, and did not take it lightly. Although he made it a point that Fruit of the Loom was the largest employer of the neighboring towns, Alvaton and Bowling Green. Basically, everyone knew the brand there. It was like Corvettes to some people in Kentucky. It was everywhere and everything as it was the main provider of income to the district. While branding internally wasn't like it would be today, people in general in the vicinity were very much aware of the brand, both in name and logo, and would be easily remembered by workers, their families, and anyone else not associated with them, but living in the neighboring towns. I feel like this is a very important point to bring up. Edit. I forgot to mention that he stated that nobody called it a cornucopia in the office. It was generally referred to by workers as the basket. Thank you to the poster below for inadvertently reminding me of that part of the call. Some may know me based on my post in the Mandela Effect thread. My father worked at the Fruit of the Looms headquarters in Kentucky, it's since moved, and we both have extremely specific memories and life events regarding the cornucopia. I've had a small handful of other experiences in my life that are perplexing, but nothing in regards to glitches per se, except for this. It honestly bothers me. Although it's not scary, just confusing, if that makes sense. I'm not sure why, but it's been on my mind as of late, so I figured I would get this out of my system and post it here. This is a few years ago. So, my wife is Canadian-born, and she still had family up there. Her father had passed several years prior from pancreatic cancer that wasn't diagnosed in time and her mother was now very ill from complications due to Parkinson's disease. It was a long time coming, her health having sharply deteriorated after my father-in-law's passing. She was in assisted care living, could no longer speak, and we all knew she would be passing extremely soon. My wife went up to say her goodbyes, and she happened to pass away while she was up there. She stayed some time afterwards to take care of her affairs and attend her funeral. I was working at an extremely bad company at the time, with an owner who was egotistical and liked to threaten people quite a bit, 
and I was basically told that if I took off time to go to the funeral, I wouldn't have a job to come back to when I returned. So, I stayed here in the States, missing my mother-in-law's funeral. It pissed me off, but there wasn't anything I could do at the time. After it was all complete, I went to pick up my wife at the airport. I saw her along the curbside in front of her airline's area and pulled over. There were traffic cops up ahead that will bark at you if you put your vehicle into park, so I was in a hurry to get her luggage and get back into the truck. I had a 2017 Toyota Tacoma at the time. It was the SR5 package with the chrome rear bumper corners on the rear. I picked up her suitcase and flung it into the bed of the truck, kissed her, asked her how she was doing, and I opened her door. As she started to get in, I ran around the truck to the driver's side and got in. In this short amount of time, someone had pulled in right in front of me and was taking their sweet time, so I decided to back up to give myself enough room to pull around them into the middle lane. I looked in my backup cam, didn't see anyone, and proceeded to go into reverse. Suddenly, the truck stopped abruptly. I had hit someone that was out of sight of the camera in the corner of my bumper. I was in such a rush to get out of there that I didn't use my mirrors, which was dumb, I know. My wife asked if we hit someone, and I said that I had, and told her to wait there. I got out, and there was a red-slash-maroon Hyundai behind me, with the pushed-in grille in front part of the hood. A Mexican woman and her mother came out of the car, screaming at me. I apologized over and over, and they eventually calmed down and realized it was just an honest mistake. I took ownership of the fault from the beginning to end, and they seemed content that I wasn't trying to skirt responsibilities. I looked at my Tacoma, and the chrome part of the bumper, there's chrome only on each far corner, was scraped up badly slightly dented upwards. Though, I was honestly pretty happy to see how little damage there was after looking at how badly the Hyundai was banged up. They explained that their car was a rental, and they seemed very stressed about having damaged it. They didn't get the insurance from the rental place, and were adamant that I filled out the paperwork in the glove box that's provided in case of an accident which I promptly filled out without any hesitation. I showed them my insurance, which they took a picture of with their phone, and filled that info out as well on the paperwork along with everything else. We wrapped things up, came back into the truck, and I apologized to my wife, who said something to the effect of, oh, stuff happens, it's alright, and we went home. The next day, I went out to look at my truck, thinking I would have to eBay the chrome piece to replace it. It's a cheap part, and I would rather have that than to deal with my insurance replacing the part on top of having to pay for the rental's damage. I was shocked to see that there wasn't any damage on the chrome. In fact, I thought I was mistaken on the side that I hit since there was absolutely no damage. I checked the other chrome bumper piece, but nothing. Here's the part that messes with me. I never was contacted by my insurance or any other party or company about that crash. My wife remembers it. I remember it. But there was never any damage on that truck after the initial day, and the people who didn't have rental insurance, who would have most certainly reported me due to how badly the Hyundai's damage was, never reported me. Keep in mind... I was super stressed out for weeks, so it's not like we imagined this or something, because I knew that I'd have to be dealing with my insurance company and paying of deductibles, etc. Money was tight at the time as well, and I was extremely stressed about having to pay $500 for the deductible. I kept waiting for a call, something in the mail, nothing. I suppose this could be explained away as they were trying to be nice or something, and just used their own insurance. I mean, who would take out their own deductible for someone else that they don't even know? But even past that, it doesn't explain why my truck was no longer scraped up and dented. 
Has anyone else had an experience like this? This Reddit sub was the only place I figured it was relevant. Thanks. A couple of days ago, I answered a question on the Ask Reddit subreddit. The question being, Hikers of Reddit, what has been the most effed up thing you've ever seen? This is the story. It was the time I went to Niagara Falls, so I picture this for environmental reasons. It's summer, two days before your trip to Niagara, and there's a bunch of rain that causes mudslides, and the day you get there, it's extremely sunny and hot. During this trip, my husband and I decided to go on a hike-slash-walk through some easy trails on the upper Whirlpool Trails, Niagara River Whirlpool. We went there because the trees provided amazing shade, and it's right next to the rapids of the falls, so it felt refreshing. So we started going down the trail, and it started getting cooler and a bit harder terrain to maneuver yourself around, and my steel-toe boots started to weigh more for some reason. But the lower that we went, the fresher it felt, so that was no problem for us because it was hot up there and fresher downwards, so we kept going. But I guess we went a little too low, because there was suddenly nobody around us. We came upon some signs and a little fence that told us not to go in that direction, because there were mudslides due to the rain, and we wouldn't be able to go to the Devil's Hole moderately safely. We weren't trying to get to the Devil's Hole, we're a bit superstitious and know not to venture too far in to disturb the woods. And let's be honest here, a place that's called the Devil's Hole, plus some warning signs that said not to go in that direction, it sounds like it's straight out of a horror movie. I told that to my husband, he agreed, and then out of nowhere this man is behind us. I have no idea how he snuck right behind us, or how he heard our conversation, but he said hi to us, and told us that he has lived there his whole life, and some little mudslides have never stopped him. Then, he recommended that we keep going. He jumped the fence, and on he went to the distance of the trail. And for some odd reason, his presence calmed us. I guess seeing another human was reassuring. So, we crossed the fence. The trails were really cool, literally. It was getting cooler the more that we walked, but my steel-toed boots started to feel heavier than before. There were mudslides, broken trees, eroding rocks, and a mildly foul stench of decomposition. Maybe some predator killed its prey and didn't eat it, I thought. And, weirdly enough, there was no sign of the man that went in before us, we went right after he went, so how was he that fast that now we couldn't see him? I had a lot of thoughts because of the environment. It felt so weird that it made me anxious and scared, especially when I started feeling like something was staring at me. My husband was also feeling nervous because he was walking faster and humming. He started to walk way ahead of me, and he saw it first, the hole. And when he stopped to look at it, I felt it. This immense flight or hide reaction. He felt it too because immediately he grabbed my wrist before I could see anything, and he power walked us back the way we came through. I was panicking because the look on his face was horrible. What did he see? I asked and tried to talk, but... Then he told me not to look back and to just keep walking straight. And I did. Why? Well, one, because I know better than to look back. And two, he wasn't humming. I looked at him and he was quiet, but I could still hear the humming. Aside from the humming, everything was quiet. So quiet that I started to pay attention to the environment again. It was cold. The trees looked rather decayed than broken, and there was a decomposing animal on the side of the trail. 
What kind of predator kills but then doesn't eat their prey? And at this height, rocks shouldn't be eroding yet, in such an odd pattern, too. But especially what convinced me that something was off was that stare that I felt behind me. Once we got out of the forest, I didn't dare to ask, but once we were back in our state and I felt more secure, I asked what he saw and he wouldn't answer me. So I left it at that. Ignorance is bliss, after all, and I'd rather not burden myself with such knowledge. What happened in Niagara stayed in Niagara. Before posting this, I got curious as to what my husband saw, and I showed him my comment retelling the story. And he stops and says, The guy wasn't coming from behind us. The guy came from the trail that led to the Devil's Hole. I refuted it by saying that, no, he came from behind us, and that's what gave us a sense of security. Because, in reality, it did give me a sense of security. In my mind, if the guy entered first, that meant that the trail must be safe and we wouldn't necessarily be loners down in said trail. Well, my husband argued that it made no sense, that he wouldn't have trusted that, that he felt more secure to go in because the presence of the guy leaving the trail made him feel safer, and that's why we felt compelled to go. But I argued that that would have probably freaked me out. He promises he's recalling the events correctly, but I'm sure that I'm recalling it correctly too. Whatever it was, this random guy that appeared from either side convinced us to go in, and there were never any footprints left behind. It makes me wonder what truly happened in the woods that day. Do any of y'all maybe know where I can get said answers? Or have any of you have experienced anything similar? Or know what it could have been? How can two people remember two different scenarios so vividly? And, for any curious people, yes, he did tell me what he saw when I asked. Apparently it was nothing impressive or cool, but... Basically, he said that while he was walking ahead and trying to ignore that ominous environment, he gave one step to look, and he felt a tremendous coldness in a straight line. And that's extremely abnormal in nature. A temperature change like that just doesn't happen. And when he looked forward, there was nothing in sight, but he wasn't going to wait for anything to appear, and his gut told him to run away. That's how we ended up getting away from that trail and out of the woods. And that's it. I have a really weird glitch that happened to myself and my husband about six or so months ago. It's not a huge story or anything like that, but... It's one of those weird things that really makes you pause and think about the possibility of our reality being a simulation. So, back in December, my husband and I were invited to a small get-together at a friend's house. This was something we used to do annually around the middle of December, but thanks to COVID, we had all decided to go ahead and just not do it. At least until we were sure that we were all safe. Unfortunately, I have a medical condition that requires me to take a specific medication that is actually an immunosuppressant. Thanks to that, I have to be super careful in public right now, and these last two years have been absolutely insane. I have managed, but it isn't easy. Anyways, this year's get-together was supposed to be a big one, since we've had to cancel for a few years. By big, I don't mean a ton of people, I just mean that it was super important for everyone involved, and we were all looking forward to it. We all started the planning in November, and decided that we would drive out on the 17th of December, and stay there until the 19th, then we would head home. On the night of the 15th, my husband and I were actually talking about the whole thing, and he randomly asked me if I was certain that I was comfortable with still going to the party 
since it was going to be a decent number of people. Around eight or nine, including us. I said it was fine. That I trusted my friends and that I knew we had all taken the proper actions to minimize the risks. Plus, it wasn't a huge gathering. Sure, nine people is a good amount, but it wasn't something crazy. He said all right, and then we went to bed. That night, I had a really weird dream. Sure enough, it was about the party. In the dream, I remember that my husband and I were at said party, and everyone else was there, but nobody was talking to each other. Like, the food was prepared, everyone had their plates, and everyone was sitting at a table, but there was no motion whatsoever. Everyone there was just sitting at the table completely still. Then my friend Serena stood up at the end of the table and looked at me with a dead serious look and said, Michelle, you shouldn't be here. This is a dangerous place for you. I remember those exact words being said. She said I was not supposed to be there and that it was dangerous. And I remember that it was Serena specifically saying it. Now, it may sound incredibly stupid, but something about this dream caused me a huge amount of distress, and I think my husband could tell that something was wrong the next morning. He asked me if I was okay, and I told him that I had had a weird dream about the party, and that, because of the dream, I was second-guessing whether or not we should go. Again, I know it sounds dumb, but I think I was looking to him for some kind of reassurance. However, he said something that completely blew me away. He looked me straight in the face and asked me, Did Serena tell you that we shouldn't be there? I swear, I could feel my face go pale. I started to feel dizzy. I asked him how the hell he knew that. And then... He told me that he had a dream similar to that a couple of nights ago, and that's why he was so pushy about asking me if I was still okay with going. The dream he described was pretty much the same as mine. People were there, there was food, but there was nothing going on at the party at all. It was just still. Then, Serena said that we shouldn't be there. It was the freakiest thing to have someone else tell me my dream almost exactly, and I had no idea what to say. After talking through it a bit more, he said that it was pretty clear that we were both still pretty nervous, so we should maybe sit this one out and just go next year, just to be absolutely sure that we're safe. I agreed with him, completely. No matter how dumb it felt to follow advice from a dumb dream, Part of me felt that the fact that we both had it was important. We inform our friends, and they're upset, but they understand. We didn't tell them about the dream, obviously, but we told them that we were going to sit this one out and came up with some BS reason about me not feeling well and not wanting to get everyone else sick. Well, about a week after the whole party happened, I got a call from who else but Serena. I answer and say hey, and she responds sounding like absolute hell. She hardly had a voice, was coughing, and just sounded completely lethargic. She mentioned to me that she was glad I didn't come to the party, because apparently her dad had given her COVID, and she didn't know she had it until about a day or so after everyone had gotten together. She mentioned that, the day of the party, she had been feeling a bit weird, but it didn't seem too serious. And then, two days later, she was feeling like she was dying. At the end of it all, all but one of them ended up being sick with it. They all got through it, of course, but the fact that it basically became a mini super spreader event tells me that, had we gone, I would have caught it and it would not have been good. I don't know if this dream we had was some sort of weird premonition, but the fact that we both had pretty much the same dream, and we both called out Serena as being the person in the dream telling me not to be there, 
when she was the one that most likely spread it to the group, that honestly makes me think it was something supernatural. Regardless, ever since this, I've been a pretty firm believer that things out there aren't always what they seem, and that reality is a bit... weird. This is all true. I've always had odd, unlikely, and even seemingly impossible things happen to me. I dare not go into all of them, as I honestly believe something is attached to me. Be it an angel with a sense of humor, plain old weird karma, energy, I don't know. And I don't want to upset whatever it might be. I'll write this anonymously and with no disrespect. This is just to tell you about some of the many items that I've had literally disappear, never to be seen again. Even today, every day, things are not where I leave them. I've learned that I have to be very aware of where I put something. Keys, glasses, remote control. And still, when I look for it later, not only is it not where I put it, but I might find it under other things, like a shirt or a piece of paper that I had not moved. That's my day to day. But I've had many items really disappear. I've only, over the last couple of years, become aware of the multiverse theory or given it any real consideration. Maybe this is where they go. In the 1980s, I was going from the car to our condo with my husband and some family members. The parking spot we'd parked in was a mere 15 or so yards from our door, but at the time that this happened, I had walked at most five yards from the car. I took my giant wad of a keychain from the car and held it in my hand. As we all walked toward the condo, within a matter of seconds, I realized my keys were no longer in my hand. I asked everyone to stop and help me look for them, my husband had known that I had my keys, so he assumed that I dropped them. We all assumed that, although I knew it would have been impossible for me not to have heard substantial clink if they had dropped from my hand to the pavement, considering I had many keys and a lot of unnecessary metal keychains. There was only black pavement between the car and the condo, as I hadn't made it as far as the small grassy area. Everyone looked for about 20 minutes, including all through the car and the entire parking lot and grass area, even though I hadn't been near the grass. Those keys never turned up. I had to have remade three car keys, a house keys, mailbox key, and other random keys, like those to my parents' house. None of my family would have taken my keys as a prank and then never admit to it, and let me spend all of the hassle to replace everything. I couldn't replace the keychains. I lived there for another seven years, and those keys were never found, not even by neighbors. My husband and I lived near San Francisco. The Golden Gate Bridge was celebrating an anniversary which we attended. My husband bought me a really cool t-shirt commemorating the event, and I loved that shirt. It was just the two of us. We got into the car, and of course I had the shirt with me. I even opened it up and looked at it again in the car as we were driving home. It was dark by then, and a little breezy, so we had all the car windows rolled up. We didn't stop anywhere between the bridge and home. But you know what I'm going to say. The shirt never made it to our home, and I never saw that t-shirt again. When we got home, it was not in the car anywhere and even checking and rechecking the car over the next couple of years, it never turned up. This also happened with a movie rental from a video store. I'd put the VHS into the car, and by the time I got to the video store, it was gone. It was exactly the same several years later with a rented video game. Also, I had a banana disappear from a car, and no telltale smell of old banana ever appeared. 
these are all car related, even though they were all in different cars and over many years. I've lost many other things that I know were in my house, that were just never located, even after moving. Special things that I put in a special place just vanished. Of course, I've lost things that I can attribute to theft or human error, but these I can't. Are all of these many lost things in a big pile together in some other reality? I would love to hear your thoughts. Back when I was in my early 20s, I worked for a certain retail store that doesn't really exist anymore. It's a certain store that started with a K and ended with a major bankruptcy. Sorry, that was a bad joke. Anyways, I worked for Kmart, and I was in my 20s, as I said, and I had the amazing job of cleaning up the store when people made it a mess, which was incredibly frequent. There was one weekend near the end of the year where we were running a number of sales, to try and make higher sales numbers for the Christmas season, since I was working double shifts because I was the only janitor that was employed at the store at that time. My town is decent sized, and while I like to believe that I have a lot of friends and I know a lot of people, there's no way that I could know everybody. But we did have a lot of people coming in and buying a ton of stuff for the holidays. It was in the middle of one of my shifts. I was running the floor cleaner over one half of the store, and I pulled down an aisle that had a few young ladies standing there checking out the makeup. I tried not to push the cleaner down aisles where there were people, but by the time I noticed they were there, I had already made the turn, so I just figured I would take it slow. As I got closer, I noticed one of the girls a little more than the other because she was, to me, incredibly attractive, but also somewhat familiar. I was single at the time, and like I said, in my 20s, so I puffed up a bit and tried to clean the floor with some extra gusto. I approached the trio, and I kind of tried to make eye contact with the one that I wanted to notice me by glancing over at her every few moments. Then... The weirdest thing happened to me. She looked up at me, and we made eye contact, and I felt like I knew her. I don't mean that she just kind of looked familiar, I felt like I knew her very well. As I approached, I slowed the floor cleaner, and the two of us just locked eyes and stared for a few moments. After a couple of seconds, she sort of tilted her head and said, Tony? Tony, my last name? And I immediately responded with, Claire. Claire, her last name. Right? It felt as if the two of us had known each other for years, though I know for a fact that neither of us had ever seen the other before this exact moment. We both tried to place where we knew each other for a few moments. I asked where she went to high school, and she mentioned that she attended a school an entire state over, and she had just moved there. We talked about summer camps we attended, places we'd worked. Hell, we even started talking about family to see if maybe the other was a friend of the family. Neither of us could place the other person at all. There was literally no way that we knew each other, or could have known the other one prior to this moment. We knew each other's names, and I felt like I knew what she liked and who she was as a person. It was one of the weirdest moments of my life, as it was like the second we met eyes, we each downloaded the other person's information, if that makes sense. We really could not place the other person in our lives anywhere, but it almost felt like we were long childhood friends. After a few awkward moments... We basically told each other that it was nice to see the other person, and then went about our business. I went back to cleaning the floor, 
and she and her friends went back to looking at the makeup. I kind of wish that there was more to this and that we became friends or more, but we honestly never saw each other again. At all. I do remember her name, and I've tried to look her up on Facebook, but I can't find anyone with that name. The only thing that I can think of is that we were supposed to know each other, or somehow knew each other in another life, and the information all flooded back when we saw each other. It's one of those moments that I never forgot, and I guess it was pretty cool how it happened, but really? It kind of weirded me the hell out for a while, and it's never left my mind. This glitch happened when I was around 11 years old. My paternal grandmother lived in South Carolina at the time, and my father was visiting her. They were both alcoholics, and my mom and dad were separated, but not divorced. My father was working in South Carolina, and was supposed to send money to us in Georgia to help take care of my sister and I. But... Sometimes he wouldn't send any money, instead he would go on a bender and waste it all in one night. This was back in the early 80s, so there was no direct deposit or anything like that. So the Friday that my mother knew he had gotten paid, she decided to quickly dash down to South Carolina to my grandmother's house that night to try to get some of the money before he wasted it all. Because the payday before this one... He had wasted it all, and we were running out of food. I was always up for getting out of the house. I hated sitting at home, and I still do to this day. My mom asked me and my sister if we wanted to go. My sister declined, but of course I was up for it. It was already the evening after my sister and I had gotten out of school when my mother thought of this plan. My grandmother's house was at least three hours away. A little background on my mother. She was not the easiest person in the world to be around. She was very strict and she had a short temper. She'd smack the crap out of you before you knew what hit you. She came from an abusive childhood. Her father was also an alcoholic and some of the things I've heard that he did to her and her siblings are nothing short of horror. My mom was also handicapped from a birth defect that really messed up one of her legs. She walked with a limp, and I remember her telling me that she was never able to run, and as a child it made her really sad. She wanted to play with the other kids at school, but she couldn't keep up. On top of all of that, she had six brothers. She was the only girl until her sister was born when she was 14. Her brothers didn't cut her any slack as far as her handicap went, so she had to learn to literally fight from a very young age. When she was newly married to my father, he would get drunk and try to hit her, and she would end up beating his butt. Sadly, as a child, I had seen her many times get him down on the floor and beat the absolute crap out of him, so suffice it to say, she had anger issues, and she could be quite mean at times, both physically and mentally. So, anyways, we get to my grandmother's house that night, and of course, both my grandmother and father are plastered. Luckily, he hadn't wasted very much money. He was passed out on the floor, and I remember I had to basically pickpocket him to get the money out of his wallet. My mom figured that I could do it easier because I had small hands. Anyways, we get the money and run to the truck to get the heck out of there before one of them wakes up. We're on the road back to Georgia, and I start feeling tired. I'd gotten up early and gone to school that day, so I was pretty worn out. I curl up and put my head on the window of the truck, and I fall asleep. I slept for a good while, and I felt pretty rested when I woke up to the truck slowing down. My mom was stopping to get off the interstate. As I woke up, I glanced over at my mother. It was her body and her hair, but her face was twisted and grotesque. 
she was looking out the window, thank God, because if she had looked at me, I would have had a heart attack. She looked like what can only be described as a hideous demon. Years later, I saw the exact thing that she looked like in the movie The Devil's Advocate. The part of the movie where people's faces shift to reveal their inner demon, that's what she looked like. It only lasted a few seconds, and then her face was normal again. For years, I told myself, Oh, you were probably half asleep and you just thought you saw it, but I wasn't. I was wide awake and pretty well rested, and I damn well know what I saw. That was the one and only time I ever saw anything like that, thank God. As an adult, I've wondered if she had some sort of demonic possession co-piloting her body. I never told anyone about it until I was married, for at least 20 years, and I have now only told my husband, two daughters, and now all of you. I'll never forget it, it was terrifying. Has anyone else ever had anything like this happen? Well, thanks for listening. I've been watching your channel for a while now, and I finally decided to submit my experiences with Glitches in the Matrix. Before we begin, I'm overall a very down-to-earth person, and I always try to understand the unexplainable. While most of the time I find ways to rationalize strange events, I have two stories, both of which I'm not able to rationalize, no matter how hard I try. Here they are. Event 1. This first event happened a few months ago, back in February of 2022. It was a day like any other for me. I woke up, showered, got dressed, ate breakfast, and went on with my day. That night, I remember preparing for bed and putting my socks that I wore that day in the bin with all my other messy laundry that I had to get done, eventually. I soon slipped into bed and dozed off ready for the next day. When I woke up, I repeat the same routine. I get out of bed, showered, got dressed, except for one thing. In my sock drawer were the exact same pair of socks that I wore the day before. How could this have happened? I rushed to check the dirty laundry bin, and sure enough, the socks were not there. Confused, I put the socks back into the drawer, thinking, Wow, I must have been more tired than I thought if I really put these socks back in the drawer. I continue on with my day, and the strange experience of the morning soon leaves my mind as time goes on. That night, before bed, I do the same thing. I put the socks that I used that day into the dirty laundry bin, and I head to bed. I wake up the next morning, but when I get dressed, again I realize that the pair of socks I wore the day before were back in the drawer. Now I was extremely confused because I know that I put those socks into the laundry bin. At this point, I was really beginning to question my sanity. I remember putting the socks in the bin, but here they were, in the drawer, as if they had never even been touched. I continued on with my day, trying to push the experience out of my mind, but unlike the day before, it wouldn't leave so easily. That night, I make sure that my socks were in the bin. I remembered looking at the bin and thinking to myself, okay, the socks are in the laundry bin, if I wake up tomorrow and the socks are gone, there's a problem. After that, mildly stressed and anxious for the following morning, I head off to sleep. Upon waking up the following morning, I check my sock bin. This time, the socks are right where I left them, in the bin, ready to be washed. I'm dumbfounded at this point. I was fully expecting the socks to be back in my drawer, as they had been for the last two days. I wondered if I truly was going insane, and I was putting my socks back into the drawer those days. The thing is, I remember the socks being in the bin when I went to bed. 
to this day, I have zero explanation as to what happened with those socks. Was it just a really faulty memory, or was the Matrix trying to tell me to do my laundry? Event 2. This event happened back in April of this year. Now, back in 2021, my aunt was diagnosed with cancer, and sadly, after a long battle, she lost the fight. She passed away back in January of this year, and it was a tough time for everyone. Now, let's fast forward a few months into April. I'm just on my phone, scrolling Reddit, when I suddenly get a message from Snapchat. Now, I never use Snapchat. The only reason I have it is because sometimes my friends will send me photos, but I rarely use the app myself. So, you can imagine my surprise when my aunt's account added me on Snapchat. I originally was surprised and then mildly terrified. I knew it was my aunt's account because the account was connected to my aunt's number that was in my phone. Now I know that my aunt's phone was given to my cousin, so... I thought that my cousin added me via my aunt's phone, but my cousin deleted Snapchat off of that phone because they didn't have a need for it. And that raises the question, who added me on Snapchat then? I like to think that it was my aunt looking down on me and just checking in, but who knows? Maybe the Matrix forgot that she was dead. Well, that's the end of my stories, and I hope you enjoyed. Sorry if it was rambly or long, I wrote this at midnight. But thanks for reading, and have a good day. I have two really weird events that happened to me, and I have no idea what to really make of them. Nor if they are actually glitches in the Matrix, but... I figured I would go ahead and share them for the sake of entertainment, or whatever. These both happened a few years back. No connection between the two other than I was involved, and they both kind of happened while I was at work. Well, that and they were both weird as hell. At least to me. The first one's a bit short, but that doesn't make it any less freaky. I work as a server at a fairly large bar and grill chain... We get a lot of people that come in over the weekend, typically starting Friday night, so it's not unusual for us to have a lot of people that are there ready to keep things flowing smoothly. There was one Friday night that I worked where it seemed like we were just not going to get a lot of business, which was fine by me. Obviously, this didn't make my manager too happy as we were eating labor hours with so many people on the clock, but had no money coming in. He waited until around 7.30, which was typically when we would all be running around like crazy, but when business didn't pick up, he decided that a few of us needed to go home. He sent a few of the kitchen staff home, and a couple of the wait staff, and basically brought us down to our weekday staff. While he was deciding who to send home, I literally said the words, As soon as they leave, we're going to get half a dozen parties in that door at the same time and it's going to be a struggle. He laughed and told me that since we were past the busiest hour, it wasn't likely, as that has almost literally never happened since he's worked there. Sure enough, as soon as the last person that he decided to send home walked out the back door and left... We had literally six parties walk through the door. Six, which is half a dozen, and it wasn't just parties of two. It was parties of two, three, four with kids, and so on. And they all walked in within the same two-minute period. Needless to say, he claimed that I jinxed the store by saying what I said. I was just more so proud that I had somehow predicted the number of parties that were going to walk in precisely. Even crazier, that was it for the entire night. We closed at 9.30, so about two hours later, 
and there weren't any other parties beyond those six that came in the door. It was a really weird Friday, and such a mundane event, but it was still really weird to me that it pretty much happened as I said it would. The other event was super weird too, but it kind of happened the other way around. It was the midday shift in the middle of the week, so it was pretty slow. On these shifts, I like to take my time and talk to customers a bit more, be a little more friendly, and this is especially true if they have a young child. I love children, so I love to just chat with the little ones while I work, as it makes it so much easier and makes me happier. A young lady and her two children come in, they get seated in my section, and I come over to chat shortly while I take their order. I get their food, and I bring it to them, and then I come back while they're eating to just do my check-in. I asked the son, who had to be around four or five, if he liked his chicken tenders, and he looked up at me, deadpan stared, and says, Don't burn your house down. I asked him what he said, and he just smiled and said that he liked his chicken. Yeah, it was a bit weird, but I just moved on with my shift. That night, I was making dinner for my roommate and myself, and something happened with the pan that caused a bunch of oil to spill onto the burner. And it caught fire. I panicked, unsure of what to do, and I was just screaming as it started to catch the back wall behind the stove. I admit, I did not know what to do and I felt incredibly stupid. But my roommate ran into the room with a small fire extinguisher that we had that was rated for kitchen fires. She blasted it and put it out. I was just standing there with a shocked look on my face when she looked over at me and said, Geez, Liz, don't burn the house down. As soon as she said that, I freaked out. The fire was enough to make me stressed, but the fact that she had said almost the same thing the kid said, and the fact that he had said it to me that day, it was seriously terrifying. Those are my two events that I can remember that happened. It is weird for me that they both happened at my work, and maybe the first one was a complete coincidence, or maybe my particular chilies just happened to be in a location where the veal between reality and the Matrix is thin. Who knows? I have heard and read several Glitch in the Matrix stories that kind of prove that both cats and dogs exist outside of the confines of the Matrix, but I have a bird that seems to be able to operate outside of it as well. I have two cockatiels that have been together since they were hatched, and I came into them a few years ago. The pair are two boys, one named Froggy and one named Chipper. Yeah, I know that they're dumb names, but it's what the previous owners had called them and I'm not going to change them now. Chipper is a fairly calm and normal bird. He's really sweet and very friendly, but also very patient and calm while being handled. Froggy, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. He doesn't mind being held or handled, but he is energetic as hell. He likes to fly around as much as he can, he sings any chance he gets, and he also likes to nip at people for the fun of it. He's also the one of them that... I personally believe is able to do things that he should not be able to do. What's weird is that he's done the same thing twice, but in the opposite way. It'll make sense here in a few minutes. The first time that he confused me happened about six months ago. I had both Froggy and Chipper out of their cages while I was home working because they like to walk around and I have the room cleaned up enough that they won't cause any problems. I let them out of their cage during the day, but I don't let them out of their room, and they're pretty well happy with this arrangement. So I was working in the room with them, doing what I needed with Chipper sitting on my shoulder and whistling randomly, when I noticed that Froggy was nowhere to be seen. 
I looked around in all of his hiding places, under the desk, on top of the bookshelf, and then I turned around to look, and I noticed that he was in his cage, dozing off on his perch. It confused me because there was no way that he could have gotten back into his cage. I close it up when they're out, so that they're kind of forced to stay out of it for a while. I just accepted that maybe I had left the door open and he figured out how to close it, and I just didn't notice it. It wasn't like me at all, but I accepted the possibility for that event. It was the second thing that Froggy did that confused the hell out of me. A few days after that, I had a pretty bad headache in the middle of the day, somewhere around noon, so I decided that I needed to go ahead and get them back in the cage while I took a short nap. I get them in, I lock the cage, and I shut the door to the office where the cage is. Then, I go to the couch to lie down. I fell asleep for a little while, and then I woke up to a bit of a pinching feeling on my nose. I open my eyes confused, and I look down, and what do I see but Froggy sitting on my chest and nipping at my nose. Then he makes his little chirp song when he notices I'm awake. It took me a few moments to really have what was happening click. At first I chuckled at it because I thought it was cute that he was waking me up, but then it clicked that he shouldn't be out of his cage, nor should he be in the living room. I pick him up off of my chest and I sit up, and then I look over to the office. The door was shut, like, completely shut and latched. I thought that maybe the door could have just shut itself with the weight of the door, despite the fact that that has literally never happened, and I just went to go get him back in his cage. Much to my surprise, his cage was still shut and locked, and Chipper was just sitting there staring at me like, why is he out and I'm not? The whole time, I'm trying to get Froggy back in the cage, He's sitting on my shoulder, bouncing up and down and singing like he was just happily celebrating a victory. I honestly have no idea how we got out of the cage, much less the room. The cage door was latched, and the room door was also shut, so I don't see how the little dude could have gotten out, but he did. At this point, I'm just assuming that Froggy has mastered the art of teleportation through the Matrix, and because he's a simple little guy, he just uses that power to get into and out of his cage for the fun of it. I started learning about glitches and other things after an incident with my cat. The story has always been in the back of my mind, and more so once I learned what a glitch in the Matrix was. But I'm not 100% sure it qualifies, or is anything more than misremembering, but I'll let you be the judge. A little insight into my life growing up. Growing up in Maine in the 80s, my family and I would go camping every summer. It was my parents, myself, my two sisters, and a few other families that my parents were good friends with who all had kids. We would usually go camping a few times a year, and it was one of these camping trips that something happened that, to this day, no one can give me answers for. I had just turned six a few weeks before this camping trip, and for my birthday I had gotten this really special sweatshirt. To this day, I just turned 39 last month, I can still picture this shirt. It was special to me because it was reversible. It was blue on one side and pink on the other, with penguins on both sides. The weeks leading up to this trip, it took an act of Congress to get me out of it, so that my mom could wash it. So here's what happened. And I honestly think if it wasn't for my love for that sweatshirt, I probably wouldn't have remembered any of this. We had been at the campsite for a day already, 
and it was coming up on our second night there. I'd say it was around 8pm because it was getting dark. I remember that this campground was different than any of the others we had stayed at, because they had these strange platform areas that you would set your tent up on. They were either a raised wooden or concrete platform, and I don't know why, but I feel like the platform that the tent was on played the role in how I got hurt. I was wearing my new sweatshirt, blue side out. But this is where things get hazy. I remember my favorite shirt was covered in my blood. I remember my dad having to cut it off of me as my mom went to get help. And that's it. I know you may think, okay, so what? But I've brought this up to my parents. They remember that camping trip. They even remember me getting hurt, but they don't remember anything else. The amount of blood on my shirt was a lot, and I remember my dad had to cut the shirt off to see how bad my injury was, but I have no scars. They can't explain where my shirt went. They don't recall anything past the point where my memory gets hazy. Those camping trips were well documented. My mom always took pictures of everything. Except there are no pictures taken that night of that trip, and my mom has even said that she vaguely remembers taking many pictures the following two days that we were there, but can't explain why they're not in the scrapbook from that year. I've always gotten this knot in my stomach when I think about that night. I know that something bad happened to me. And maybe my parents are lying. Maybe something bad did happen and I blocked it out. But it just feels like there's something more to it. And maybe it's all my glitch research that I started doing after a recent incident, and that's why I'm thinking that's what happened. That I died that night, and ended up in a different reality. But going through all the scrapbooks from before that time to all the years after, everything seemed different. I started writing down memories that I had since before my sixth birthday, like friends in school, outfits I wore on first days of school, and trips we took, and with who. And the things I remember are not the same as the pictures my mom has of those times. Like, the outfit I supposedly wore on the first day of kindergarten, I 100% remember that day and the picture my mom took and showed me a week or two later after the film was developed. I was wearing tan corduroys, and a pink turtleneck with a sunflower on it. But the actual picture my mom has of my first day of kindergarten, I'm wearing jeans, a matching jean jacket, and a white shirt, all of which had the Disney character Bambi on them. And no, I did not wear the corduroys and turtleneck in any other photos, school or otherwise. There are so many things that I've seen in pictures that are not how I remember them. Yet, everything in pictures taken after my favorite penguin shirt was ruined is 100% of things that I can remember. It just doesn't make sense, and part of me wishes that I had never heard of glitches, because it hurts my brain trying to figure out what could have happened that night. I guess I have a strange glitch or personal Mandela effect situation that I haven't been able to figure out, and probably never will. My apologies if this is somewhat boring or too short. It's not really a long story, nor is it super crazy. It's just really weird to me, and I can't find an explanation for the whole thing. For a little context, I'm not huge into the paranormal, nor do I believe we live in a simulation, and I'm not under the influence of anything, etc. and so on. But this is something that has bothered me ever since it happened. My cousin, I'll call him Danny, was my best friend growing up. I lived in a neighborhood that had next to zero kids, so he and I would always be spending time together. My favorite childhood memories are from when he and I would play Pokemon Red and Blue on our old school Game Boys. 
because we would just sit there for hours playing through the game, trading the Pokemon, and battling each other to see who had the stronger monsters. In fact, it's because of him that I got my then favorite Pokemon, Alakazam. It's not really relevant, but to get Alakazam, you have to trade your Kadabra with another person, and then it evolves. There are a few Pokemon from back then that did this, and I remember that we pretty much finished the Pokedex in both games because of how much we played together. It may not seem like it's important, but I remember getting to the 150 mark on the game, which is not something you could do without two people, or at least two games and two Game Boys. When I was 12, Danny's parents, so my aunt and my uncle, decided to move to another part of the state. It was pretty far away, so we never really got to see each other after this, as my parents never wanted to go that way, and I couldn't drive. I moved on, though, and I grew up with pretty much no other friends. I'm not trying to garner pity, I'm just saying. Then, when I was around 17, my aunt and uncle wanted to have a good-sized party for Danny's 18th birthday and graduation. It was seemingly a really big deal for them, so they invited everyone over and wanted the entire family to come and celebrate. I was stoked. I hadn't seen him for five years, and I had planned on giving him a short speech during the party about how much spending time with him as a child meant for me. I was going to make a joke about how we spent hours playing Pokemon, and I wanted to get him an Alakazam card as a joke, only to find out that they don't print Alakazam cards. Look it up, it's pretty stupid. So I just planned on giving him my little speech, and that was that. When I got there, I was actually thankful that I didn't get an Alakazam card for him, because apparently none of my childhood memories playing Pokemon with Danny ever happened. That's right, nothing I just said is a thing that happened in my current existence. My cousin Danny, the one that I spent hours playing Pokemon with, the one that traded me the Alakazam that I cherished and beat his Pokemon with a hundred times, he was apparently born blind. He has, apparently, never been able to see anything. Ever. And the reason that this was a big celebration wasn't just because he was graduating, but because of how much he struggled with trying to get through high school with his disability, and how proud everyone was of him for making it. Obviously, I'm pretty damn proud of him too, but I don't get how this is possible. For the record, this is the same Danny as the one that I grew up with. Same red, seemingly wind-swept hair, same bright green eyes, and same goofy attitude. Except, this Danny can't see, and has never been able to. Being unable to see means that there's no way he could have ever played the old school Pokemon games with me, and my entire childhood is one big false memory. I'm not going to lie, it actually hurts the hell out of me to know this, and there's really nothing that I can do about it. There were no other cousins that lived near me, there were no other kids that it could have been, and obviously I didn't just imagine it all or dream that it all happened. I am devastated that my best friend as a kid just didn't seem to exist in this reality. It's been years since all of this happened, we're both in our 30s now, but I still think about all this quite often, and I honestly miss the Danny that I knew and grew up with in the other timeline. I honestly never thought that I would have a story like this to tell. I always knew glitches were a thing that people experienced, but had never looked into other people's experiences until this event happened to me. Luckily, I stumbled across your podcast, but I'm still at a total loss as to what happened. Okay, some quick context. I'm a 28-year-old female who works in a very large hospital. My job is super simple. 
and probably one of the easiest in the hospital. I keep track of visitors as they come in with heart surgery patients. I'm supposed to check them in as they come into the waiting room and then take them back to recovery when the patient is out of the OR. However, with COVID, my job has went from slow to mind-numbingly boring. I used to put patient families in consult rooms for the doctors to give updates after surgery. I would make coffee, give locker combinations for large families with a lot of items that they brought in with them. However, now we have a limit of one visitor per patient, and the doctor calls the visitor's phones after surgery, and then the recovery nurse calls them directly when they are ready for them in recovery giving them directions to make it back without needing guided. This means that people just opt to go back out to their car and wait most of the time, except on extremely hot or cold days. My job feels seemingly pointless a lot of the times, as I only get the occasional old person who doesn't have a cell phone, or person without a car, so at maximum, I get four people waiting inside a day. About a month ago, I was alone at my desk as I am most days, playing on my phone and listening to a true crime podcast through my earpods. At almost 9.30am, I had only seen a handful of people in my almost three hours of being at work, most of which had been lost or turned around while looking for a clinical appointment. I decide to grab my bagel out of the fridge, and I head down to the cafeteria to use their toaster. As I'm on my way back to my desk, I feel my tummy grumble, so I quickly sit the container on my desk and make my way to the restroom. Now this is where it gets weird. I couldn't have been in the bathroom for more than five minutes. My mind was on my bagel as I was starving. I walk out of the bathroom and experience what I can only describe as real-life lag. I felt myself step through the threshold of the bathroom into the hallway, but suddenly I'm back in the bathroom taking that final step out of the bathroom into the hallway yet again. I stand there for a second kind of thrown off as I felt weird. Suddenly my stomach feels empty. And instead of hunger, it now feels uneasy and nervous. I make my way back to my desk, grab the cream cheese out of the mini fridge, and I sit down trying to shake the weird feeling that something was off. I open the container expecting a, for lack of better words, moist yet warm bagel, as it had been sealed in a plastic container after having been toasted. I'm surprised when... Although the container had obvious condensation in it, the bagel was cold. I shake my mouse on my computer to get rid of the screensaver, and I glance at the time as I log back into the system. I had expected to be logged out as I was inactive for more than five minutes. However, when I look at the clock in the corner of the screen, it reads 2.50pm. I somehow lost five hours within what felt like no more than 10 minutes. The bad part is, I don't think anyone even realized I was gone, as, like I said, my job was kind of pointless at the moment. I checked the waiting room, and I see a couple of people I didn't recognize in seats, and two people that had checked in with me previously were already gone. My phone had the usual notifications as my husband sent me TikToks while on his lunch, and my mom, who was babysitting my daughter, had sent me a couple of pictures of their outing to the park. Everything was seemingly normal, but it was as if I had just popped out of reality for five hours and returned without a single soul noticing I was gone. I also went back into the same bathroom, making sure there wasn't any weird smells, thinking maybe I had passed out from a gas leak or something. I really don't know, and I cannot come to any logical explanation as to how I seemingly lost five hours of my day. My husband says that maybe I was abducted by aliens, 
since they could tell that I had a pointless job. However, he's just salty that he makes less while working out in the elements all day. On the plus side, though, at least I still got paid for it. This is one of the biggest personal glitches I have ever had. I work in the admitting department of my local hospital, and I also help the business office with miscellaneous billing duties. One of the things that I do is keep track of obituaries. When someone's obituary appears in the newspaper, I check to see if they still owe the hospital money. If they do, I clip the obit, fill out a form, and then keep track of how their insurance pays and whatnot. A few years ago, I've worked there for more than 20 years, one of my coworkers in the dietary department retired and passed away soon after. I know, because I processed her obituary. This coworker's daughter was really good friends with my cousin, so the daughter was even at my cousin's house the day after my coworker's funeral. They had a big wake for her mother and everything. Today, as I'm working ER registration, the daughter comes in and says that her mom is in the ER. I was brought up short. I thought, uh, what? I didn't say anything for a moment, so my office mate had to step in for me and look up this lady's mother. Sure enough, it's the woman who died years ago. My office mate lets the daughter back into the ER to see her mother, and I'm unable to find the obit form that I filled out. The OP added several edits to the story. Edit 1. I heard back from my cousin, and he's as weirded out as I am. Coworker's daughter has no memory of the wake or anything, but she said that she's been getting this stuff from people around her from the past few days. People remember her mom dying, even funeral details and the like, but Coworker's daughter does not remember any of it. Plus, her mom is right there. It's freaky. Edit 2. I spoke with a cousin instead of texting him. Coworker's daughter said it was her dad that died, and not her mom. But she also said that that's not the way any of the people who run into her remember it. They're asking where her dad is, how he is today. He's not answering his phones, his texts, etc. And to her... The man has been dead for over 10 years. I've been asked if I had any close calls or moments where I could have slipped from one universe to another, and yes, there was one. It was a little over two years ago. I was getting my evening medications together, but I was tired and I screwed them up. I ended up taking an entire full bottle of glipizide, which is a medication that lowers your blood sugar. I accidentally took enough to kill a horse. I realized it right as I laid down for a nap due to the extreme exhaustion, and I felt really weird going to sleep. Looking back on it, I think I fell asleep forever there and woke up here. Edit 4 was them thanking people for the awards, so not relevant to the story. And then edit 5, while the vast majority of you have all been lovely, I've been getting some really angry replies and private messages about what happened with the glipizide. I'll post here what happened to me with the medication, and I don't know what more I can add. This is how the incident occurred. If you don't believe me, that's fine, but take your vitriol and anger somewhere else, please. So, here's what happened. I take a lot of meds for a lot of stuff. Epilepsy, diabetes, etc., so, I have a lot of empty pill bottles lying around. That day, I had an empty pill bottle with the label still on it, so I figured I would just grab all of my evening med doses out of my bedroom, take them to the dining room, and just swallow them with dinner. I've done it loads of times before. Like I said, I was tired that night, so when I pulled out my bottle of glipizide, I got my dose 
and then accidentally closed the bottle with my evening meds in it, put it back where the bottle of glipizide went, and then took the full bottle of glipizide with me to the dining room. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't look at the bottle when I took my meds that evening. I just threw the pills back and swallowed them with dinner. The pills were tiny, and all I noticed was that they didn't feel quite right in my mouth. I didn't think anything else about it, though, because the idea of taking a whole bottle of pills seemed ludicrous to me. What kind of idiot would do something like that? Well, me, apparently. When I stumbled back to my bedroom, I checked the bottles because something was very, very wrong. I discovered the rest of what should have been my evening meds in the bottle I had mistakenly put in the glipizide's place. And that's when I saw that I had downed a full bottle of glipizide. I wanted to grab my husband, holler, shout, do anything, but my body was made of lead. I could only crawl over to the bed and flop on it. And when I woke up, everything was fine. That's what I mean by going to sleep there and waking up here. I don't think I woke up there. I think I died there and woke up here. So, I have one of those stories that is basically, I should be dead, but something in the Matrix decided that I shouldn't, so now I have no explanation for these events kind of situations. And I'm going to go ahead and say now that the story does include language and information about me wanting to end my own life, so consider that your warning. I don't know if I should call this some sort of quantum immortality, or if it was some kind of reality or timeline shift, but it was something. And, to be honest, it kind of haunts me. So this all happened back in 2015, back when I was pretty much at the deepest point of my depression. I won't bore you with all the details, I'll just give the cliff notes as to why I was falling apart. In 2015, I was 17 years old, and two events completely destroyed my life. My mother ended up dying from a very aggressive and seemingly sudden onset cancer, and I was, to put it nicely, sexually assaulted by my cousin at the Celebration of Life get-together. A situation that no one in my family wanted to believe, nor address and still hasn't. Obviously, these two things happened pretty much back to back. My mom died, and my cousin assaulted me within about a week or so of it happening. With these two things weighing me down very heavily, I was not exactly what one would call a happy person. I was not coping with these two things well at all, and I was hit by a sudden wave of decision that... I was just going to end my life. I decided that I was going to take whatever medications I could find or get my hands on in the medicine cabinet, and would also swipe a bottle or two from my dad's room, and would just drive my car off of a ravine or something. It wasn't a very well thought out plan, but it was what I decided to do. As a quick aside, I am not condoning these actions nor am I saying anyone should ever do anything that I decided to do, ever. I'm just stating as a fact what I did end up doing. So, I got what I needed, I got it all stuffed into my backpack, and I told my dad that I was going to go for a drive to clear my head. I drove my car to a nearby park, and did what I needed to do, threw everything into the back seats, and took off back onto the road just waiting for whatever was going to happen to actually happen. I remember feeling a horrible pain in my stomach. I remember feeling like I wanted to throw up, and I remember feeling like I was getting incredibly dizzy. I have to assume that all of these were just effects caused by taking meds and mixing them with alcohol. Or maybe just the alcohol itself, but 
it was definitely hitting me. I remember looking around for a ravine or a cliff or something like that, and seeing a spot that I could vaguely remember as being steep. The last thing I remember in this line of events is me slamming on the gas pedal, feeling the car accelerate, closing my eyes, and then feeling the car leave the ground. I very distinctively remember feeling the car leaving the ground. I knew what was coming, and I was just waiting for it all to happen. But it didn't. The car never hit the ground. It never flipped, crashed, or anything of that sort. I opened my eyes again and was nothing shy of confused. I was pulled over and parked on the side of the road. The car was still running, but I was at a complete stop with all four tires on the ground. When I looked over at the passenger seat, everything was just sitting there, all still sealed and full, like I never followed through on any of my plan. I no longer felt sick or dizzy, just really confused and angry. I stared out at the road, at the woods to the side, and then I stared at the cars as they passed, thinking, how the hell did I not die? And how the hell did I end up here? I ended up shoving everything back into my backpack and just heading home. I obviously never told my dad about this, or anyone really. It's both really sensitive, and it kind of makes me sound like I'm insane. But I wanted to at least put it out into the world that I somehow reset to a point where I did not end my own life. I know what I felt. I know what I did. And I remember pretty much the entire thing as it played out. That feeling of being on stable ground after feeling the car go into the air, is the one thing that will never leave my mind. Mostly because the feeling of a car getting air is quite distinct. It kind of churns your stomach. Again, I don't know if this was quantum immortality or timelines or whatever, but it was weird to me, and has stuck with me. And for anyone that cares, I'm about as good as I'm going to be for now. I went through therapy, and I no longer talk to anyone in my family, but I'm trying to make the most of what I have. Okay, so I actually have two glitches which involve her. This is the first, and I'll edit in the next if anyone wants. The first glitch... This happened about eight weeks ago. It was past bedtime, and I could hear her awake in her bedroom, which she shares with her four-year-old brother. This is not unusual, and they're really cute when they play and chat at night, so no big deal, right? I walked up the stairs, and I can hear their little chatting and giggling, so I decide to pop in and see if they need anything, and to remind them that it's sleep time. I stepped over the safety gate, so I was inside their bedroom, but only about one step inside. The hall light was on, and it lit up their bedroom. My son is in the left bed, and my daughter is in the right. I say something like, What are you two up to? And they sheepishly tell me that they're playing. My eyes adjust, and I can see my son in his bed and my daughter in hers. I can see them moving and getting comfortable as we chat, the light's low but enough to see the shapes of them, the reflection in their eyes and their bedroom floor, which is a narrow gap between their beds. It's a small English council house. We chat for about three minutes, and I ask them if they need anything. I clearly hear my daughter's voice answering me from her bed. As we're talking, I feel something brush the back of my leg. I didn't even look to check because we have cats and those little devils follow me everywhere. One must have jumped over the safety gate and was coming in to see if anything interesting was going on. Something felt a bit weird, though, and after maybe five seconds, I realized I hadn't heard the gate rattle as it always does when the cats jump over it. 
The little cheeky fur demon must have snuck in when I put them to bed, and that is probably why the kids are awake and giggling. I turn and look at the small gap behind me, expecting to see a little black cat, and I kid you not, my two-year-old daughter is stood there. I am so shocked, and I say to her, How did you get there? And that little girl just starts giggling her little butt off. Like, hysterical giggling. I start nervously laughing. I say, You were just in bed. Did you just teleport, little miss? And we all start laughing. I'm persistent and ask a few more times, How did you get behind me? But she doesn't answer me. She just keeps giggling sweetly. I ask her brother how did she do that, and he carries on laughing. I even say, what is going on here? What are we all laughing about? But neither can answer, and I'm baffled. After a minute or two, I say something like, All right, super baby, let's get back in bed. I tuck them back in and close the door behind me. I'm totally freaked out. Not scared or anything, just utter confusion. It felt like I had just looked up and the sky was green. Now, I'd been looking at her in her bed. I was talking to her. I could hear her voice coming from her bed. I did not see her get out of bed. I did not see her walk towards me down the thin strip of floor space. And I did not hear her footsteps on the floor. She didn't make a peep of noise. It was like she just disappeared. I told my partner, and together we tried to figure it out, but it felt like something impossible had happened. Eventually, he just said, Glitch? And, well, here I am. I posted an experience earlier involving my daughter, and as promised... Here is the second glitch involving her. If you remember the layout of the bedroom, there are two beds parallel to each other with a narrow gap in between. At the head of their beds is a window which overlooks the back garden. This happened not long after the first event, maybe 10 to 20 days after. It was close enough that the moment it happened, I instantly thought, not again, in a kind of acceptance way. It was long past bedtime for them, probably just after midnight. They had gone to bed on time, and I hadn't heard a peep from them. I let my dog into the back garden to do her thing, and I started walking down my garden to a chair we have at the far end. It was dark by this time, but the moon was out, so I could see well enough. I got halfway down the garden and I turned to look at my house and instinctively looked up at their window. The light of the moon was hitting the window in a way which made the glass look kind of white, even though their blinds were closed. But I didn't just see the blinds in the window. I saw my daughter's silhouette stood on the windowsill. I can remember it as clear as anything, like a flashbulb memory... It was a completely black silhouette, her size, her shape, hands up to the glass, and I couldn't make out any details or features. I recognized it was my daughter because of the size, but at this point, I just knew there was a kid up at the window and I ran like hell upstairs. I rushed into their room and flicked the main light on right away. I had already started talking and blurted out a word like, Hey! about to ask her what on earth she was doing, but I stopped in my tracks. Both kids were in their beds. I figured she jumped out quickly and was pretending to sleep. I actually walked up to her and tried talking again, but this kid was fast asleep. If you've ever seen a young child in deep sleep, it isn't something they could fake. Slightly sweating, pink cheeks, sprawled out like a dead weight... I'm so shocked at this point, because I am certain of what I saw. I check my son, even though I know it couldn't logically have been him, but he's sleeping deeply too. 
I just back out of their room feeling pretty flabbergasted. This time I definitely got creeped out a bit, along with the familiar confusion and disbelief. I went back outside and checked. The window was lit up in the same way, only no weird toddler figure looking back at me. This isn't the first time that things have appeared out of nowhere, especially in my kitchen area. I figured it might be a rat or mice placing them there, so I ignored it for the first few occurrences. The first time it happened was maybe months ago. Whenever I'm in the kitchen, I often find tiny objects on the countertop like nails, broken zippers, that small key that you use to open canned goods, and other small metal pieces that look like part of some other object. But last night was the weirdest one so far. While I was fixing a meal, I found this strange red box about the size of a book that's like magnetic at the front so it seals shut. It contained eight rectangular glass prisms that has some sort of animal inside each one, and one small toy that looks like a samurai figure about the size of a Lego. I've never seen this thing before. Honestly, it looks like something that a kid would keep. It was perfectly placed on top of my condiments rack, so I thought to myself, maybe it fell from the top shelf since I never have looked in that area before. But the thing is, it seemed kind of new, and no dust was accumulated on top of it or whatsoever, so that couldn't be possible. Another possibility was that it was a cat who did it since there's a small hole on the kitchen roof that it could fit through due to this house being renovated long ago, but they never got around to finishing it. That theory was quickly debunked as there's no traces of bite marks or anything on the box. Also, a cat's mouth wouldn't be able to grasp onto an object of that size, and the box itself cannot fit through that hole. Just this morning again, I'm baffled to find a floor mat placed messily on my bathroom floor near the toilet bowl. Now I'm really freaked out. For some context, I live alone. This place is not rented, so landlords are out of the question, it was actually my grandfather's old house and was just passed on to me since I figured I'll be able to save a lot instead of paying for rent. The friends and family do not have a spare key. Last time someone came by was weeks ago and I often clean the house so I should have noticed it by that time. If the neighbor's kids sneaked in, I would have known right away because I have two dogs and they would have alerted me that somehow someone else was in the house. I let them stay in the garage area, and the front door is always closed as well, so it wouldn't be them who brought in the floor rag, and the box was placed somewhere that they wouldn't be able to reach. I also work from home and rarely leave the house, so it's unlikely a burglar had gotten in. If it was even a burglar because why would they just leave something behind instead of taking something? I checked my valuables, and they're all still there. I don't sleepwalk as far as I know, because I have this watch where it tracks your sleep and the time that you wake up. Sleep pattern is straight, too. At first I thought I was just being hexed or something, but later realized it might be a glitch that I'm experiencing. Can someone tell me what's actually going on? Am I just being paranoid or something? I'm thinking of getting a motion sensor or a camera set up when something pops up again. Upfront information. I'm a manager of a clerical team. I have an assistant manager, lead, that I interact with daily, and we are constantly taking care of the team together. The date of the experienced is 6-6-2022. I got to work at 9am, and was immediately pulled into a meeting that lasted two hours, 
and was broken up with a coffee break. I left my peer manager's office and went to my office to grab my cup and a K-cup. To get to where I was headed, I had to pass by my lead's desk. When I got there, she was sitting at her desk working on something on her computer. I stopped by to give a quick hello and catch up on the need to knows. I made some remark like, Hey, how are you this morning? She was very focused on her computer and didn't immediately respond. I've learned that when she's that focused, it's best if I just walk away because if I insist on a conversation, she'll have to restart her train of thought and a verbal report was not so important that I felt like it deserved an interruption. Plus, I was still needed back at the meeting, so I walked away and got my coffee. After, I needed to have my lead work on something discussed in the meeting. She wasn't at her desk, so I asked the team if they knew where she went. They all reported that they had not seen her today. Disbelieving them, I laughed and thought they were all trying to prank me. However, they reiterated that she had actually called in. I kind of lost my cool, not out of anger, but because I was truly baffled by the situation. I texted my lead, but she wouldn't respond, so I was dang concerned about her well-being. I'm still at a loss to how to explain this, but I talked to her today, and she confirms that she was not at work. She is a little weirded out, but I'm really bothered. I legit had a one-sided conversation with her, and I know that it was her. There's no way that it wasn't her. Desks are assigned, especially for leads. It bothered me so much that I got home and spent all night watching YouTube on being able to see or perceive alternate dimensions. It's literally the only conclusion that I can draw. I'm not crazy, but since October of 2020, I've lost 100 pounds and am at a point in my life where I have never been healthier. The thought that it could be a brain tumor had crossed my mind. I would think, though, that my employees, the closest of which was 8 feet from me, or any of the other 40 employees, would have noticed me talking to an empty desk. Anyone else have a similar experience in public? Her desk is hard to miss, meaning she sits in a spot that is highly visible to all employees, and vice versa. How can I experience something so profound, but in public? I am wondering if I should get an MRI. Two edits here. First, I read a comment on another post that had mentioned quantum immortality. Did I die in the break room while getting coffee? Second, in the comments, I talked about a change in the scenario that I didn't realize at first. I remember that we were talking about a singular issue with the report. After getting coffee we were addressing two issues. I distinctly remember being confused about this disconnect. I heard a story on your channel recently about a person that found an item in a box that it couldn't have been put in. I think it was a top or something that they found in a sealed box, and it made me remember something that happened to me back when I was younger. At the time, I thought it was just a weird thing and moved on, but now I realize that this was actually a glitch in the Matrix. It actually happened whenever I was 18 and was moving out of my parents' house and into a dormitory. Because I was 18, I was super strict on how my stuff was packed, because it was my stuff, and it was pretty much all that I had to my name at the time. I kept things in their own boxes, books, CDs, clothing, everything had its place and there was a place for everything. I know, it sounds a bit OCD, and maybe it was, but that's me. Because I had everything in its own place, I packed every single thing that I owned. Neither my mom nor my dad had packed anything in my room. 
I made sure of it. One of the boxes that I packed was full of the things that were on and in my bedside table, which is where I kept everything that I could that was important to me. One of the items in this box was a necklace that my grandmother had given to me. It was a fairly large pendant that was shaped like a sunflower. It was quite literally my prized possession from when I was young, because it was the last thing my grandmother had given to me for my birthday. I know I'm repeating things to some extent, but this was my prized possession. Nothing I owned was more important than this necklace, and I would never do something with it that would put it somewhere that wasn't easily accessible for me. So, I know for a fact that I had put it in this box, because it was a small box that I had sealed with packing tape, and then a strip of duct tape and wrote IMPORTANT on it in all caps, with black sharpie. However, when I got to my dorm and started unpacking, the necklace was not in the box. There was no way that it was opened, as it would have been obvious and the person would have had to have removed the duct tape from the cardboard, cut or removed the packing tape, removed said necklace, and then retaped it with all of the same tape. That's not something that is easily done, and why would you do it in the first place? To add to the weirdness, the necklace was gone for about three months. I was incredibly upset about the fact that it disappeared, but then one day I got a call from my mom telling me that she had found it. I was ecstatic, and I asked her where she found it. She then tells me that she found it in their bathroom, in the drawer on the sink, where my dad kept all of his shaving stuff. I have no idea how or why it would have ever been put in the drawer that only my dad would have been in and he had no idea how it got there either. He never packed anything in my room. I remember specifically putting the necklace in the box, and the grandmother that gave it to me was his mother, so he knew how important that necklace was to me. So, that's my glitch. I know it's not as weird as some, but it was super freaky to me. I was so upset for those few months, but... I am glad that the Matrix decided to give it back to me. I have no idea how it happened or why it happened, but it did. And now I get to tell this crazy story to people. So, this is the biggest glitch that happened to me, and is one of the defining events of my life. When I was 14, I started trying meditation, and I found myself experiencing what seemed like snippets from other lives. I dismissed them at first, but they really started coming more into focus after a specific moment. I'm a, a big Nine Inch Nails fan, and I had just purchased their album, With Teeth, which deals with the subject of reality and how do we know when something is real or not. The last track, right where it belongs, was the moment that I realized nothing in my life had ever seemed truly real, and these strange snippets that I had been seeing felt more real than the life I had been living. After that point, things really came to a head. I started seeing the world around me blurring, you know how when you'd watch a DVD and it would skip or glitch out, you would sometimes see a few pixels of the previous scene remain on the screen after the scene had changed? Reality started doing that to me. I thought I was going crazy. The more I meditated, the more I would see things from this other life that I'd had, where I was married, where I grew old with this man that I loved deeply, who I knew better than anyone I had ever known. At this point, at age 14, I had never fallen in love, and I had no idea about these experiences that I'd seemingly remembered. But, all of a sudden, I knew what love felt like. I knew this man, 
his face, his quirks, the feeling of sleeping beside him and the heartbreak when he passed away before me. Things continued to escalate. I started seeing someone appearing to me. It looked like my husband from this other life, but according to this being, he was the part of me that was connected to God. He would have full conversations with me, answer questions that I asked, and also make weird prophecies about my life. One thing he told me was that people with red hair will be important. I'm 29 now, and the father of my child and my daughter both have red hair. These encounters with this being happened every day until Christmas Eve. On that day, a door appeared in my room. It was white, slightly ajar, and it emitted a blue and purple light. The being that I'd been conversing with appeared me and told me, This is the door home. You know how to go through it, and you can go at any time. He then told me that this was the last time that I would see him as he was leaving, but I would see him again one day. He then went through the door, closed it behind him, and it disappeared. After that, all the glitches and visions of my past life stopped. I've tried to contact this entity again, but never managed to. I don't know what any of that meant, but I swear that it was all real. Since then, I've always been looking for answers, but I've never gotten them. Just last year, my partner mentioned to me that he used to have weird visions as a child, and one of the things he saw was a door that matched the description of the one I had seen when I was 14. He also mentioned some other very specific things that tied in with my conversations with this entity, like key words and details too difficult to get into here. We have no idea what it could mean, but it's reinvigorated me to look for answers. I'm hoping if anyone has had similar experiences, they might get in touch with me, and maybe we could compare notes. Maybe we could find some answers. I have a bit of a strange glitch in the Matrix that may be a bit boring and short, but it's one of those weird things that I cannot explain. I recently decided that I wanted to get a new car, because I was able to save up a bit of cash, and I wanted to go ahead and sell my old car, which was a 2006 Nissan. It's a nice car, but... It was just getting up there in years, even though I had barely driven it. It was 16 years old, and it only had 100k miles on it, and that was a fairly recent achievement. As such, I put it online, then I was getting hits like crazy for it, and then I got someone that offered me $150 over what I asked if he could buy it that night. So, I went ahead and said it was his. Then... I realized that I needed to get the car cleaned out right away if the guy was going to come by and buy it that night. I got it out into the driveway, and I was cleaning everything out of it. I emptied the seats, and then I opened the glove box and grabbed all of my CDs out of it. I then hit the eject button and got the CD out of the CD player, placing it back in its case. I will say that I hadn't listened to CDs in a while, thanks to my Bluetooth earphones, but the last CD that I had apparently listened to in my car was California by Blink-182. I remember the artwork on the album and the cover because I thought it was super neat artwork, and I genuinely love that album. So, I finished cleaning out the car, made sure that I had everything ready to go with it, and I waited for the guy to show up and check out the car. He came over with someone else, and they were looking at the car, and then he asked if he could test drive it. I told him that I didn't have any issues with that, and I handed him the keys. He gets in the car, and turns it on, and the second he did, the radio kicked on. And it kicked on to one of the songs off of California by Blink-182. 
I kind of just glanced at the radio, and he laughed, making a comment about how it was good the radio worked. And then he pushed the eject button, and out came the album. He handed it my way, I grabbed it, and I let him go take his test drive. While he was gone, I went inside to where I put the CD case for the CD, and I opened it. Sure enough, the CD was sitting right there in the case. I was seriously confused. How the hell did I end up with two CDs? How did a second copy of this exact album end up in the CD player after I had taken it out and put it away? I just put it in the case and decided that I would think about it later. The guy came back, said that he wanted the car, and we finished out the deal. After all that wrapped up, I went back inside, and I was thinking about the second CD. I was trying to remember if I may have bought a second copy of it, or if I had a friend that had maybe left it, but I couldn't think of anything. I decided to grab the case and open it to look at the two CDs to see how exact of a copy it was, and to my surprise, the extra one was gone. In the case was just the one album, not two. So not only had the Matrix gifted me an extra album, it also took it back after the fact. Like I said, I know that this wasn't as weird or creepy as some other stories, but to me, it was still really a weird thing to happen, and I can't explain it. Even worse, I no longer have the proof that it happened because the copy disappeared after the event. I haven't had any other experiences since this happened, and I cannot explain how it happened. But it was seriously freaky for me. I have a short glitch that happened to me that may not seem like it was that big of a deal, but I wasn't the only one to experience it. So it's one of those minuscule but also really crazy because it wasn't just me involved situations. My sister and I lived together for a while in a two-bedroom apartment, and we would split rent between the two of us. The way that we would pay the rent was that she would give me the money to put into my account, I would then deposit it, and write a direct check to the rental office, and that was that. That way, we only had to do one check, and I had checks already, so it was just the easier way to do it. The rental office was incredibly anal about getting the rent checks early, and by that, I meant that they wanted the rent to be paid on the first, and no earlier. Because of this, the week that we had to pay, I would write the check, and then clip it to the refrigerator, and one of us would take it up to the rental office on the first of the month. In the month in question, I had done what I usually did, and had written out the check and clipped it onto the fridge. Unfortunately... There was an issue at my sister's office with the payroll, and they had a delay in payment by a few days. Because of this, she wasn't going to be paid until the 3rd, so she wouldn't have been able to get me the money until then, which meant that we would be paying rent on the 4th. The rental office also had the whole due on the 1st considered late on the 5th, so we were going to be down to the wire. I know this all sounds really kind of confusing and convoluted, but it's important to understand the timing and the process by which we had to do things. So, she got paid, she gave me the cash, and I went to the bank to deposit it on the 3rd, so that we could run up the check on the 4th and be on time still. I told her to remind me to grab the check in the morning, so I could take it in on my way to work. Unfortunately, she did not remind me, and I completely forgot about it until I was sitting at my desk at work. I was obviously cursing myself and freaking out because they weren't going to be in the office when I got off work. And, if they didn't have the check in hand by the time they locked the door to the office, they added like $150 onto the rent for that month. 
I was not willing to pay the extra. So, I told my boss that I needed to leave at lunch for a personal thing, and he was fine with it. I kind of felt bad for dipping out early, just to get a check into the office for my rent, but I figured it was better than paying all the extra. Lunch came around, I left to go get the rent check, and was confused when I got home. The check wasn't where I had left it on the fridge. My first thought was that it had fallen, but I checked around the fridge and couldn't seem to find it. Then, my second thought was that maybe my sister had grabbed it when she got up and taken it in before she went into work. I went ahead and called up to the office and asked them if they had gotten the rent check for us, which it was a bit strange to have to ask, but they looked and said that they did in fact have this month's rent, and that we were good. When my sister got home that evening, I thanked her for taking the rent check up to the office for me, and then she told me that she hadn't. She said that when she had gotten up that morning, the check was gone, so she assumed that I had remembered. I told her that I had forgotten to grab it, and I actually took a half day off of work to get home and get it in so it wouldn't be late. Neither of us took the check up to the office, but yet they had it. For the record, I genuinely believe that she was not messing with me, because it's not like her, and I wasn't running on autopilot or anything like that. Neither of us have any idea how it got into the office, but it did. Like I said at the beginning, I know it's not that big of a glitch, but it helped us out quite a bit, so I guess thank you to whoever runs the simulation. I have two weird glitch occurrences that happened on the same road, and they happened a couple of months apart from each other. This road is one that I take to get to my sister's house, and is one that I like to think that I know pretty well since I'm on it three or four times a month, depending on how frequently I go over there. It's a pretty standard four-lane highway that runs north and south, and it crosses a few other main highways in my county. Basically, it's one of those highways that you take to get to one of the bigger highways. And, being four lanes, two in each direction, it's pretty clear which way you're going and where you need to be to get off the highway. So, the first event is a bit weird, but also fairly short. I was driving down the highway to get to one of the exits, so that I could get on to the main freeway. I was cruising at around the speed limit, which is 65, and I was pretty focused on what was going on in front of me, so it's not like I was distracted. A bit up the road, I see what looks like someone that had pulled over with a flat tire. I remember seeing the car thinking, that's a nice car too and then thinking that it really had to have sucked to pull over on the highway to change a tire. I remember thinking about how much it would make me panic that someone would be speeding by and not paying attention, and potentially hit the car while I was changing it. I then also remember thinking, oh, you know what, I should get over to the left lane to give them extra space, because that would be the polite thing to do. I glanced up at my rear view and my side view mirror to make sure that there were no cars coming. Then, I hit my signal to get over and looked back forward, and the car was gone. I slowly drifted over to the left lane to give space to a car that was 100% no longer there. It wasn't like I had managed to pass the location before getting over because I still had a few moments before I was going to get to where they were but when I looked back, there was no car there. I was upset because this now non-existent car made me look like an idiot changing lanes, just to change back like a dumbass. The second event was actually on this same stretch, but it was at the exit to get on to the other highway. This highway runs north and south, and it intersects several other highways that go east and west. 
each exit for the other highways become what is known as a cloverleaf exit. If you don't know what a cloverleaf exit is, it's a type of exit that goes into a full circle to get you off one highway onto the other. It's called that because the four exits, an east and west exit on each side of the north and south highway, looks kind of like a four-leaf clover. So, I go to get off the north and south highway, to get on to the east and west highway, and I get into the clover leaf to get off of one highway to the other. I drive the full circle, turning to the right. I follow the whole clover leaf, and then I exit it on to the other highway. Or so I thought. It took me a couple of seconds before I realized what had happened. I somehow managed to get on the clover leaf exit, go around the circle to get on to the east west highway, but ended up back on the first highway going north. There was literally no way for me to have done this based on the exit I took and where I was going. And when I say literally, I mean literally. These exits aren't roundabouts. There's no way to end up back where you came from. But I somehow had. I genuinely have no idea how it happened, but it did. I just sat there staring at the signs on the side of the road and looking at the next exit, which was a full exit away from where I was supposed to go. I really don't know what this was or how the hell it happened, but that was the last time the creepy stuff ever happened on that highway. Thankfully, it's been fairly normal ever since. I have lived in a medium-sized city, population of about 300,000, in Finland all my life. Like most cities all around the world, my city has legends about weird phenomena that happen around the city. But the most notorious, most frequent, and the most documented one is the doppelgangers in certain areas. I'm going to refer to these areas as Area F and Area G. Area F is located very close to the city center, and Area G about 5 kilometers, or 3 miles, from the city. Both areas have lots of affordable apartments, so the areas are a bit restless. Many people, including the few of my family members and myself, have come across someone they know from Area F or G. The weird thing is, those people you've met haven't been anywhere near that area at the time. These encounters always seem to have these things in common. The person is someone you know very well. A family member, close colleague, friend. It's always either the Area F or the Area G, they don't seem to notice you, even though you would try to wave or say hi, and, well, they haven't really been there. Sure, they could be just avoiding you and don't want to tell why they were there, but so many people have had these encounters that it's definitely weird. Often, it's been proved that the person you have seen couldn't have been there. They were out of town and can prove it, or something like that. My experience... My now fiancé and I were moving in together in the summer of 2020, and he lived in a studio in the Area G. We were picking some stuff up from his old apartment, and were driving slow, like 20 kilometers per hour, on a quiet road. I looked out of the window and saw my friend's boyfriend talking to a woman. It was definitely him. Same face, same height, same build, all that. I got a good glance of him since we were driving so slowly, so it wasn't like we just quickly drove past him. My fiancé saw him and recognized him too, but couldn't double-check because he was driving. The whole thing was strange since my friend and the boyfriend in question live in a city which is 600 kilometers, around 372 miles, south of my city. 
sure, he could be visiting our city to meet his friends, and that was my initial thought. So I decided to ask my friend. My friend was utterly confused, because her boyfriend was visiting his family 300 kilometers north from our city. You can probably guess why she was upset, thinking maybe he was cheating or something like that. She called her boyfriend to explain himself, and he went above and beyond to prove that he was where he was supposed to be. They video called, and the boyfriend showed her around his dad's house that she immediately recognized. My friend, myself, and my fiancé have tried to explain the incident many times, and of course the only logical explanation is that the guy we saw just happened to look very much like my friend's boyfriend. I've known both of them for eight years, and I definitely know what he looks like. What makes the whole ordeal weirder is that similar encounters are super common here. So common that the phenomenon has a name. Area G and Area F's doppelgangers. I've been reading about other people's experiences, and have noticed another thing in common. The doppelgangers actually live or have lived in my city, and they have definitely been in the Area F or Area G at some point. My friend's boyfriend used to have many friends who lived in Area G, so he definitely has been there over the years. I didn't know this, but like I said, most locals have been there at least a couple of times at some point. So, I don't know. Maybe time-space complexity has glitches in the area, and people see someone they know from another time? Have any of you experienced anything similar? For my birthday last year, my boyfriend bought me a pair of earrings because I wanted to get my ears pierced really badly, but hadn't gotten the confidence to do so. Him buying me the earrings was enough to push me to do it, because he had spent money on them, and they were so cute. The earrings in question were these little bird cages with tiny blue birds in them, and when I say little, I mean little. The cages were about the size of my thumbnail, and the bird was obviously much smaller. Despite being so tiny, they were really well detailed. The little birds had colored beaks and black dotted eyes. I loved them because they were obviously beautiful, but also because I have a tattoo that is very similar on my left shoulder. I have a gold bird cage with the little blue bird in it that's surrounded by music notes. I thought it was the coolest thing that he had found the earrings that looked similar to my tattoo. I went and got my ears pierced, and I made it a point to wear them as often as I could. There was one night where I decided to stay at my boyfriend's house, and before bed I went to take a shower. Obviously, I take my earrings out when I take a shower, as I wouldn't want them to get wet or have part of them end up down the drain or something like that. I remember taking them off and setting them on the container of cotton swabs in the back corner of the sink. Unfortunately, when I left for work that morning, I completely forgot to grab them. I was pretty upset, because my boyfriend has a cat that likes to destroy things and knock them around, and the shape and size of the earrings is perfect for his cat to knock around the bathroom. So, I called my boyfriend when I got to work, and I told him that I had forgotten them, and I asked him if he could grab them and keep them safe until he could get them back to me. I also mentioned that I didn't want Milo, his cat, to get to them. He said he would grab them and keep them in his car, and that he would bring them over after work that evening. I thanked him and moved on with my day, until that evening when he came over. When he came over, I mentioned the earrings and he pulled them from his jacket pocket, and I was legitimately confused. The earrings in his hands looked very much like my earrings, but they weren't the blue birds in cages. 
They were little pink birds. I kind of laughed and asked if he had just bought me a second pair, but he said these were the ones that I had left over at his place. I shook my head no, and kind of just stared at them awkwardly. I mentioned that the ones that he had gotten me had bluebirds, not pink ones, but he was adamant that these were the correct earrings. We actually had a small argument about this, him saying that the birds had always been pink, me telling him that they were for sure blue. I even mentioned that they matched my tattoo, which had a bluebird on it. Strangely enough, he agreed that that would make sense. But he kept pushing that the bird had always been pink in the cage. Obviously, I took them, and I wear them pretty frequently still, but... I'm still at a loss of how the birds managed to change from blue and matching my tattoo to pink and not matching it. They're still cute, and they're still my favorite earrings, but I just really think it's weird that they're different from what I remember. I even went and checked all around his bathroom the next time I was at his place. There were no other earrings there. So... I guess that these little pink birds did take the place of my blue ones. Or, I shifted to a reality where he bought me pink birds instead of the blue ones. I have a really strange, but fairly boring or mundane glitch but I think it's worth telling because of how weird it was, honestly. I'm 17 and still live with my parents, but I have a part-time job in my own bank account. I also have an Amazon account, and I spend way too much of my money on random things that I need or want from Amazon. I oftentimes get packages delivered to the front door. It's relevance to what happened, trust me. On the day in question, I was expecting a package from Amazon with a new wireless charger for my phone because I had accidentally broken the plug in my old one. It was a weekday in March because I was still in school, and my parents were at work until around 5.30. I also had the night off from work, so it was going to be a good night. When I got home from school, I saw a box on the front porch and I knew it was going to be my charger. I grabbed the box, dropped it on the counter, and I used one of the kitchen knives to cut the tape along the top to open it up. I cut the tape that had sealed the box, tossed the knife on the counter, and I opened the box. I grabbed my new charger from it, and then I broke the box down and placed it by the front door so I could toss it into the recycling. I then placed the charger on the counter and I planned on grabbing it and taking it upstairs, but I had forgotten it on the counter for whatever reason and went upstairs to my bedroom. I sat at my desk and started doing some stuff on my computer until I started feeling a bit tired, and I leaned back in my desk chair, and I guess I dozed off, because the next thing I knew I woke up to the front door of my house opening and then closing. I shook myself awake and headed downstairs to greet my mom. I said hey, she said hi, and then she told me that I had gotten a package, and just asked me if I hadn't heard the delivery driver. I mentioned that I brought the package in and that it was my charger, and she handed me the Amazon box. I grabbed it, but then looked over at the counter where the charger should have been. It wasn't there. I then looked over to the front door where I put the box for the recycling, and it was also gone. I was incredibly confused, as I knew that I had already opened the box and gotten my charger out when I got home, but yet I was holding a sealed box that I assumed contained the charger. I grabbed a knife and cut it open, and sure enough, it was my charger. Now, I know this isn't too creepy, but... It was really weird to me, honestly. I've thought about some of the possibilities, but none of them really make sense. One thought is that my mom could have gotten some new Amazon packing tape to retape the box shut just to 
mess with me, but she couldn't have gotten the tape. And also, why would she do that? I also checked my Amazon app because it says the time when packages are delivered, and the time it says it was delivered was 4.43 p.m., which was about 45 minutes after I got home. So there's no way that I could have brought it in when I had gotten home. So, that's my glitch. I somehow managed to bring in a charger that hadn't been delivered, and I even opened it, but I left it on the counter when I went upstairs. It was then delivered a second time, about 45 minutes later, and my mom brought the box in, still sealed. It was crazy to me, honestly, but I don't think that I'm going to ever have any explanation for it, other than it was just a weird, glitchy occurrence. At the end of my freshman year of college, I packed up my apartment. I put all of my special knickknacks and mementos in one box, being careful to wrap everything in bubble wrap, and then I taped it with packing tape. And I mean I wound half a roll around this cardboard box to make sure that everything would be safe. I then went back to my parents' house for the summer. My old bedroom had a walk-in closet, and in the back of the closet there was a small half-door that went under the eaves for more storage. I put the box in the storage space, shut and locked the door, and I didn't open it again until I went back to college. When I unpacked my box, there was this disc I had never seen before. It was a flat disc with a divot in the middle of it, so it would spin like a top, and there was a design on it that would reflect the light as it spun. It wasn't new, as it had a few superficial scratches on the shiny surface. I had never seen it before or anything like it in my life. I figured it had to belong to my roommate, and got into my box by a mistake, even though I packed and taped the box myself. It seemed weird, but I just figured it somehow got into my stuff without me seeing it. We didn't live together this year, but she came to visit soon enough, and I said, Oh, hey, I think this must be yours. I showed her the disc, and she said it wasn't hers, and that she had never seen it before. Okay, weird. But I didn't put a whole lot of thought into it. I just set it out with my collection of odd knickknacks and forgot about the whole thing. Right at the end of my second school year, I ran into an old classmate from high school. We hadn't seen each other or spoken since graduation. We ended up reconnecting, and dating... I eventually married and then divorced him. We broke up when I went out of state to another college as my last one was only a two-year program. I didn't like the school and left after one semester. When I came home, I started hanging out with my future ex-husband again, as well as his roommate. They had their own place, and I was living at my parents, so we would always hang out at their place. Except one day... I had the roommate to my house. We were hanging out in my room, and he spots the disc. And he was like, Oh, hey, did C, the future ex-husband, give you that? I thought it was lost. Immediately, I was like, WTF? I said no, it appeared randomly in my stuff after my first year in college. He went on to describe the scratches on it and how they got there. He spotted the disc from across the room and could not have seen these tiny surface scratches from that distance. But they were distinct, and he described them exactly. It turns out, this sat on their coffee table for a long time, until it disappeared around the same time it appeared in my stuff, in a box that was taped up in a locked room. A year after I last saw C at graduation, and a year before I ran into him again. I have no explanation how it got there. If the box had been opened and retaped, it would have been obvious, 
You pull that much tape off of a cardboard box and the layers of the box will rip off too. No one had access to that room. And the idea that someone broke into a house, broke into a locked room in the house, opened, and then retaped the box without marring the box at all, just to put a small, non-important item into that box, is ludicrous. And I still have yet to hear a rational explanation. I guess that this was my first glitch. I've had others since, but this was before there was a name for it, the mid-90s, and it's bothered me ever since. So, this is something that happened a few years ago, and I would absolutely love to get some answers about it. I'm open to any explanation because I haven't been able to come up with any solid ones. Back in 2018, I noticed a scar on my finger that hadn't been there before. It was a clear, distinct slash, probably about three quarters of an inch right across the palm side of my middle knuckle. It was pale and silvery, like it had been there at least a couple of years and when I ran my fingernail across it, I could feel a small ridge of scar tissue underlying it, like I would have if it had originally been a somewhat deep cut. When I first noticed it, I was baffled. I didn't remember any scar in that location, and I didn't remember any sort of injury that could have left it. But, I can also admit that I scar pretty easily, and I don't have the greatest memory. If it was just a scar that I didn't remember getting, I'd be willing enough to just accept it as a glitch in my own brain and nothing else. The thing is, that scar was absolutely not there a couple days earlier, and I can prove it. I make jewelry as a hobby, and just three days before, I had sent pictures of my hand holding a pendant that I was working on to one of my friends, and there's very plainly no scar on my finger in these photos. It's been four years now, and I still have the scar. I think it's faded a little, but it's still visible and hasn't really changed in shape or size. I shared the photos and the stories with my mom and a couple friends at the time, and none of them had any answers either. Even ignoring the photos, it's clear enough and in a location that I just don't see how I could have gotten an injury like this and forgotten about it. It looks like it would have probably been bloody, and painful, and been aggravating to deal with while it healed. I've found nicks and bruises that I don't remember getting before, but nothing like this. The only explanation that I've ever come up with is that I was doing some wood burning at the time, and I guess I could have theoretically burned myself and missed it. I tried wrapping my hand around the wood burner, turned off, and the circumference of the scar could, maybe line up with the edge of the round metal part of the top beneath the plastic handle, if the angle was right. But that still doesn't make sense to me. First of all, it's my left hand and I'm right-handed. Second of all, I would have had to have wrapped my finger around the metal part while it was on, and I couldn't come up with a scenario or position that it would have caused me to do that. Especially since I've been using that burner for years, and managed to not do anything that stupid before. Third of all, I have burnt myself with that wood burner before, including the top round portion, and it's instantly and very noticeably painful. I can't imagine myself getting a burn this large and just not noticing it. It's not like it's hot enough to instantly result in nerve damage. Finally, there was never any redness, pain, or blistering. I've poked and prodded at it, moved my finger around, and it's never felt any different than any normal, years-old scar. To this day, it's just a total mystery that's baffled me ever since, and I would love to get an answer. Does anyone have any explanations? Has anyone else had something like this happen?
My cousins were meant to come over one day. My mom and sister saw them pull up outside. They got out of the car, so my mom and sister started to point out the window, saying, Oh, there they are. Although when I looked, I couldn't see them or the car. I could only hear them talking to each other and the car door shut outside of our flat. I thought they were joking, so I laughed and said, Stop joking, no one's there. And I kept asking them, Well, where are they? They kept pointing at the same time in the same direction and said, There, they're right there. Over and over again excitedly. I was so confused because nothing was there where they had pointed. Then... They both noticed them walking to another flat that wasn't ours. They started to bang on the windows to get their attention to no avail, so my mom called them to tell them they were going to the wrong flat. They then said over the phone that they hadn't even left yet. I questioned my mom and sister afterwards why they thought it was them, and they said that it was them. Same red car, same people, same everything. But apparently... It really wasn't them. Several years ago, I worked with a young lady who shared an apartment with her identical twin sister. We worked 3pm to 11pm, and lunch was whenever we could squeeze in a bite of food between clients. My coworker and I decided to order a pizza for lunch and split it. We agreed on a large pepperoni with extra pepperoni, and I also wanted an order of breadsticks. We placed the order at the nearest pizza place and continued working. An hour later, our pizza still hadn't arrived. I called to find out what was taking so long, and the restaurant employees said, Oh, We received two identical orders a few minutes apart. The orders had the same last names, too, so we assumed that one of them was a mistake. We cancelled one of the orders. I asked them to look at the first name on the orders. They told me my coworker's name and her twin's name. My coworker called her sister, and yes, her twin had placed an identical order to ours at the same time to the same store. Being twins, they had similar-sounding first names, as well as the same last names, so this thoroughly confused the restaurant employees. We don't live in a large city, but we are in a college town with a population of about 75,000. Pizza restaurants are plentiful, and this was not at a time that would be considered traditional dinner time. I told my coworker that, in the future... All delivery orders would be going under my name, so that their twin bond would not affect my lunch. This happened last week. I was getting ready to go to work in the morning. I was still putting my makeup on, and the mirror and the table where I put all of my makeup are one and a half to two steps apart from each other. So, I was walking back and forth. When I was at my table, I looked at my earbuds and thought, I'll put this in my bag right away or else I'll forget it again. Because a day before, I left them at home. So, I put it in my bag right away and went on getting ready. I arrived at work at 7am and had to wait for my manager to open the door. In the meantime, I was scrolling through social media. I thought of putting in my earbuds, because I don't like people listening to what I'm looking at, if that makes sense. But then I thought, well, there's no one around. I'm waiting in my car, so I won't disturb anyone. So I don't put it on. At work, it was so busy the whole day that I didn't take my earbuds out of my bag. In the afternoon, when I come home... First thing I do is take my phone and earbuds out of my bag and put them on the table. I arrived at around 5pm, I went in my room and put my bag on the table to take my phone out, and before I went for my earbuds, I saw them on the table. I was like, what the hell? 
I looked in my bag and I couldn't find them. I was so confused. I clearly remember putting it in my bag because I had forgotten it at home a day before, and I was so pissed about it. But what happened here? I guess the earbuds just transported back home. Nor do I misremember it. It's so weird. So, I think today I was someone's glitch in the Matrix. I think this is an interesting story and a little humorous to share, to remind us that some days things are not what we think. So, I work at a hardware store and it's really in the middle of nowhere. There's a mall, gas station, and a few fast food places nearby, but really nothing else. I go for lunch and I park near the edge of the parking lot. I drive an old black two-door car. It has a lot of rust on it with some bumper stickers from the old owner, so my car stands out. Next to my car is this RV. It's one that you rent. It was one parking spot over from mine, so we both could open our doors without hitting the other car. This is part of the reason that I park so far. The doors on my car are big, and it's a pain to get in and out of. I stared at the RV thinking, huh, I guess it's that time of year now. I go to get in my car and see the owner of said RV head into it. He stares at my car for a moment. I'm used to this again, old and rusted. And he gets into the RV. I drive off, going to get myself a lunch since, you know, it's lunch. I decide to get some gas as well, since I'm getting close to needing it anyways, and my lunches are an hour long, so I have time. I head back to my store and park in the same spot that I always do. I have my spot. Leave me alone. I notice the RV is still there, and I'm kind of confused. I thought he would have taken off by now. I saw him get in. I turn to look back at the store and see him walking out again. Now... This poor guy stares for a few seconds at my car. If this was an anime, there would have been question marks over his head. To him, he had seen me drive away, and now my car was just there again. In the same spot, like it had never moved. The woman he saw get into the car was still sitting there. He gets into the RV again before he pulls away this time. So, it seems that I was the glitch in the Matrix for this poor man. I feel bad for confusing him, but also I can't help but laugh as I think of him telling someone else about this weird black car that drove away yet was back when he came back. I just thought you and your subscribers might get a kick out of this. So, posting here again. Usually... I have little glitches that could be passed off as coincidence. But today, it was just too weird to not notice. Obligatory posting from phone, so I'm sorry if any formatting problems and the like. Okay, so here we go. I live in a fairly popular UK coastal city. It being Sunday and super sunny, it was pretty busy. So the fiancé... 29 female, and I, 29 male, decided to go and be tourists for the day. The first glitch happened shortly after we left the house. I notice a random skateboarder ollie, jump for those non-skaters, and fall off in a very specific way. This in itself wasn't weird. We walked to the beach, and along the promenade the exact same skater does an ollie, and falls off the exact same way. Same clothes, same hair. I didn't think anything of it. It totally could have been the same guy who had skated to the same spot that we were in. Then, two events happened side by side about ten minutes later. We had gone on to the pier to just have a wander. We reached the end of the pier where they have lots of rides. I see a woman in a very unique floral dress who walks past us. We start walking down the pier towards land, 
and the exact same woman walks past us towards the rides, coming the opposite direction to us walking. Now, there's definitely no way that she could have walked that far down and back, because she would have had to have walked past us, and it was a very noticeable dress. Now, my interest is piqued. We stop at a donut stand. There is a lady serving, but she's using an automatic machine that drops dough into a fryer and then flips it, and then dumps it out at the end of a conveyor belt. We bought five. I watched the woman put five in the fryer. We even joked with the lady about how people are always so mesmerized by the machine, because we were watching it so intently. She bags up the five donuts, with us both still watching her, and when we exit the pier and are eating our donuts, there are six in the bag. They're all the same scalding temperature, which makes me think she didn't just chuck an extra one in. She was making them to order. Are we going crazy? The three events on their own are weird enough, but to have them all consecutively is what's done it for me. It was another workday like any other. I work at a printing company that printed various things. This one day in particular, though, was different. And I also want to mention that I worked night shift from around 4.30pm to 3am. Though I'm not sure that had anything to do with this episode of time loss that I experienced. I've worked here for 19 years at the time... And this is the only glitch, if that's what this was. It was the end of the shift, and there was only five other employees that worked with me on this shift, and they had punched out and were leaving. I punched out with them at the same time, but I told them I would be right behind them to leave, but I needed to use the restroom before I left, and I had to pee really bad. After relieving myself, I had dropped the toilet seat down to sit and smoke a cigarette before actually leaving, and I had my phone watching some YouTube videos. And before I say what happened, I say that I'm one who doesn't fall asleep easily at all, and I wasn't feeling tired at this time that this happened. But as I sat and smoked my cigarette, I was watching the random videos, and the next thing I know... I'm waking up to my phone on the ground, and half of a cigarette that went out after I must have dropped it during this very strange blackout. As that's all I can describe it as. But the strange thing is, when I awoke hours later, around 5.45am, the same video was playing at the exact point in which I last remember before the loss of time. And I didn't have my phone on repeat play or autoplay. Also, I woke with a strange feeling of fear and awareness so strong, it was like I was never asleep. It was so strange and, for some reason, really scary to me, and I had this feeling of dread along with it. This is something that seemed so strange and eerie to me, and still is, as I've never just blacked out in my life like this, and I hope to never feel that feeling again. For a little bit of background, I live about an hour from an international airport, and I've been there about two dozen times over the past few years. Sometimes I've traveled with other people, and sometimes alone. And the same is true for my husband. So, we're not exactly jet-setters, but we know how to get to the airport. On the trip, it's mostly straight highway, but there's one tricky interchange to go from heading east to south. We always talk about how it's the worst part of the trip, just getting into the correct lane for that spot. We made the mistake once of stopping at a nearby gas station and adding 20 minutes to our time, just trying to get back into the right lane. Basically, it's the part of any trip that you dread but it's also a part we're most familiar with and are both positive existed. 
until this past Tuesday. We went to pick up my mother-in-law from the airport and left our usual way. Everything was fine. We made it to the spot and got on the interstate heading south. Nothing looked right. We drove a little longer and things were even less right. So I pulled over and turned on GPS. The directions had us getting back on the interstate but heading north. Again, this has never been the case. That damn spot to head south is seared in my brain, and my husband was just as confused since he once missed the exit slash interchange and nearly missed a flight. Obviously, we were pretty freaked out, but we had our five-year-old with us in the car and my mother-in-law arriving at the airport. We left the GPS on and just let it take us to the parking garage. We were still shaken up about the whole thing and questioning if it really happened. So, we put our address into maps at the airport. The direction had us going the exact opposite way as our usual route. Since we got home, we checked all kinds of different routes with every way possible, but none of them have the tricky spot in them. So, it's not like we just accidentally took a different way without realizing and there wasn't any construction or detours, etc. We took my mother-in-law back to the airport today, and took a longer route just to avoid that interchange, because it freaked us both out. We're going to look at some paper maps just to verify, but we've made the same drive for years, and we know it well. Or, that is, we knew it well. The gas station that I mentioned is boarded up on Google, but this could be a coincidence. It, however, is the only thing that changed physically at this interchange. About a month ago, me and my wife decided to organize our garage and get some shelves put up so we could get stuff off the garage floor and make more room. We went to Lowe's, the hardware store for non-US readers, to get the shelves, brackets, and screws that we needed to do the project. While getting the brackets to hold the shelf boards on the wall, we distinctly remember counting nine brackets, because the first box only had six in it, and we had to get three more out of the box behind it for the total of nine brackets. So we finished getting everything, including the three eight-foot-long heavy-ass shelf boards, and go to checkout. We are doing the self-checkouts, and we count the brackets again, and there are nine in the cart, so we scan one, place it back in the cart with the others, and are working on setting the quantity to nine on the self-checkout machine when one of the workers comes up and does it for us. We tell her we have nine of them. Once we get out of the store, load everything, and get back home, we start working on putting them up, and made sure we once again had the nine brackets to hold the shelf boards. While putting up the first shelf, I had one of the brackets in my hand and went to look for some washers, as the screw heads were just slightly small enough that it could slip through the hole in the bracket, and I remember holding on to the bracket in my hand. Then, I set it down with the other brackets, and walked not ten steps away to get the washers as we're in the garage with all the tools. And the hardware. Coming back, and we start putting the brackets up. So, we get to the last shelf, and my wife goes, Uh, we have a problem. We're missing a bracket. I looked at her with a confused look and said, How? We got nine from the store, and we had nine at checkout, and we had nine when we started putting them up. Is there one still in the vehicle, maybe, and we miscounted? We check the vehicle, and nothing. No bracket. So, now we're even more confused, and I remember I had that one in my hand and set it down with the brackets when I went to get the washers. Maybe I set it down somewhere else, and I thought I set it with the other brackets? So we start searching over the whole garage. And, mind you, we have moved everything out of the garage to have room to work on the shelves, and we cannot find it. We checked in my toolbox, 
on the shelves we had already put up. We checked inside our house. We checked the vehicle four to five times. We looked everywhere in the garage and could not find it. To this day, we still don't know where the missing bracket went. It hasn't turned up anywhere, even though we made sure we had nine before leaving the store. And even at checkout, we counted again and had nine, only for one to disappear somehow. This possible glitch in the Matrix happened a few years ago, before my boyfriend and I lived together. I was headed over to his house to have dinner with him and stay over for the night. He didn't live far at the time, and we live in a small, friendly, quaint, historical town about 30 minutes northeast of the metropolitan area of the rather larger city that we technically live in the greater area of. It's peaceful out here, and it's fairly small as well. Only 5,000 people live in my town, which, in the scheme of things, isn't a lot at all. With that being said, there are no major highways or major roads here. When going through our town, it's all small roads with houses and a lot of trees surrounding everything. A majority of the roads only have two lanes, including the one that I was driving on when this glitch happened. And... This is a road that I had probably been on around 400 times, literally, at this point. I knew the turns, neighborhood entrances, houses, everything. I could precisely draw it out on paper if someone asked me to. Well, back to this day. As I was headed to my boyfriend's house, I noticed a gray SUV behind me with a small yellow and blue kayak tied on top of it through my rearview mirror. Nothing much to it, as I was naturally just checking my surroundings through my mirrors while driving, especially since it was twilight. There's one stop sign on this road. As I stopped, I looked at the car clock to check the time. This is something that only takes one second to do, literally, and that is genuinely the time it took me to glance at the time and look back up. When I looked back up to continue driving, the very same SUV with the yellow and blue kayak on top of it was now driving in front of me, and not behind me. I was in shock. I had only looked down for a second, and there's no way this car could have passed me. It's a small two-lane road, and other cars at the time were coming from the opposite direction, too. Meaning... If this car had tried to take the only possible route around me, which is by going into the other lane, it would have head-on collided with another car. I would have also noticed it passing me. Seriously. One second. It's just not possible. In addition, when I checked the time for this split moment, this SUV was also stopped behind me as well. To this day... I still cannot explain how this happened. Maybe another car hit and killed me in another reality during that drive, and I got immediately sent to this current one? This just happened an hour ago. I needed to take my bike out of the basement in the apartment complex that I live in, since they were going to close the basement for the whole day tomorrow. I left my apartment, went down to the basement, and I grabbed the keys to my bike lock. I unlocked my bicycle and put the keys inside my bike lock that I put in my bike basket. That way I can't accidentally drop the keys. I get out of the basement, drove my bike up towards the stands, and looked for a place to park it. I see a parking spot, and I chose to park my bike there. After doing that, I vividly remember walking around the bicycle stand, as I needed to lock the bike from another angle, due to the fact that there were no spaces left between my bike and the other bikes. I held the bike lock, 
and I locked my bike. Just to give you a bit of information, what I consider even more weird is that my mom gave me another key for another lock, for extra protection, as there's often bike theft in the area, and she put it on the key ring that I have my actual bike lock key on. I was going to use that bike lock and realized my keys weren't in my hand anymore. I remember dropping the keys and looked at the exact same place where I had dropped them. What did I see? Nada. There was nothing. I used a flashlight, couldn't find anything. I checked the basement, even the other bike baskets on the other bikes, the ground, and the bike wheels. Still, I found nothing. I did it about three times and checked the bushes that I had not even seen. Pretty illogical, but I tried just in case since I couldn't find the keys anywhere. It was about 11 p.m., so the reason might have been that I was kind of half asleep. However, it makes no sense as I would have seen the keys in the basement. Considering you can still lock the bike lock without the keys, my first thought was that they were still in the basement and I was just unaware of it. Or I would have seen the keys, but I didn't see them and I looked everywhere possible. I also lost my card last week as I was going to a graduation celebration. I had only walked around for around 5 to 10 minutes, and then realized my card wasn't in my pocket. This of course might have just happened unintentionally, but when it happened, I remembered how I literally had the card just a couple of seconds before it wasn't in my pocket. My decision was to try and find it as I had walked straight but I couldn't find anything and there was absolutely no wind. A couple days later, someone called and said they had found my card. It's all strange. I wanted to start by saying that I love your podcast, and I'm super curious about the things that people experience on a frequent basis. I have a bit of a story that happened to me, and it may not be as weird as some of the others, but I think it's worth sharing. It was about a week ago when I had this super weird thing happen to me, and I genuinely cannot seem to be able to place it or figure it out. It was early in the morning, and I was going through my routine, going to the bathroom, taking a shower, brushing my teeth, and all that stuff. After I was done with my normal morning routine, I figured I should go ahead and take my dog for a walk. I should mention that, at this point, I had not looked outside, nor had I checked my phone for the weather, and I had no idea what it was like outside. As I was walking toward the kitchen to at least get the Keurig set up, I thought out loud, Huh, I wonder what the weather's like right now. As soon as I finished this thought, I heard what sounded like a radio voice say something like, It is really coming down out there right now and I don't recommend going out for too long. It seriously sounded like a radio had kicked on. Like when you have an alarm clock that's set for radio. It had a bit of static in the voice saying what it said, and then it was gone. I was a bit creeped out by it because the voice was completely disembodied, and I had no idea where it had come from. I checked my phone to make sure it wasn't something on that. I don't have any of those home speaker assistant things, so it wasn't one of those. I went downstairs to my bedroom to see if I had a radio that may have kicked on in there, but there was nothing. After a few seconds, I kind of shrugged it off, but then I thought, I wonder if the weird voice was right. I then went over to my front door and opened it, and the second I did, the weather seemed to change from still to downpouring. It was like I opened the door as soon as the storm was about to start. It was definitely cloudy, but it hadn't been raining quite yet. Then I opened the door and the rain just started. I honestly felt a bit weirded out by this. And not only was the weird radio voice right about its forecast, its forecast became right at the minute that I went to look outside. 
Obviously, I didn't take my pup for a walk, much to his disappointment. I haven't heard anything like this again in my place, and I still, to this day, have no idea what the hell it was. I made sure several times to verify that I didn't have any radios that may have turned on. I've never read about this happening to anyone else, but if anyone had ever experienced a disembodied voice to tell them the forecast at the exact time they asked the universe for it, well, I would love to know about it. I bring my own computer mouse to work. I'm a weirdo about having a back button on my mouse, and work mice never have them. Anywho, at the end of every day, I go through the same ritual of shutting down and packing up before going home. I pull the receiver out of the work laptop, put it in my mouse, wrap it in a white washcloth to avoid damage, and put it in my bag. I got home one night last week and I couldn't find my mouse. I distinctly remember putting it in my bag because it was the last item I put in, right on top. Frustrated, I literally removed every single damn thing from my bag, patted it down, shook it upside down, and nothing. I feel like I go through this quite a bit and for some reason I was pissed, fuming. I know that I'm not nuts, and I know that I put it in my bag. I went to sleep, woke up, grabbed my bag, and went to work. I didn't see my mouse. I opened my bag, and it's right on top. Only thing in that slot of the bag. It's impossible. My anger was certainly disproportionate to the scenario, because there's no logic to it, and as much as I try to let it go, it lingers with my subconscious wrestling with the mystery of it. Why? What is this about? Having thrown that kind of tantrum, you better be damn sure that I absolutely made sure I put my mouse in my bag after work the next night. Cursing under my breath the whole time, wrapped it in the washcloth, tucked snug along the side, zipped it up securely, and off I went for the night. I get home, I open the bag, no mouse. No way. Less than 30 minutes ago, I just huffed and puffed like I was somehow proving to myself that it was in the bag this time. I just collapsed in defeat. I sat on the floor for a long time staring and wondering what the hell was going on. Completely different state of mind, this time sedated and out of sorts. To wrap this up, I went to work, and the mouse was sitting on my desk. Not in a washcloth, just sitting there. The mostly logical part that runs things in my head knows that we have to move on, but there is a faction that's putting up a fuss and is having a very difficult time moving on until the scene is somehow reconciled. In every other area of life, social, professional relationships, Interacting with the public, other basic cognitive functions, physical health, recent blood work was perfect. My memory and recall remain superior to others within a 20-year radius of my age, etc. Things are normal, and there hasn't been any major changes that I can tell, or that my friends can tell, and they would most definitely tell me. So, what the hell is this all about? I feel like this is difficult to explain properly in writing, or maybe it seems to lose something in translation. I was at work and decided to stop home for lunch. I also figured I would grab a few USB thumb drives because I needed one briefly at work for a file copy. My hardware at work was picky about detecting certain USB drives properly, so I thought bring a few. As I grab four different size and age thumb drives, I immediately get an irrational fear that I'm going to lose the largest 512 gigabyte one that I just purchased a few weeks prior. I also had numerous files on it. I had to logically talk myself into bringing it. 
I'm not going to lose it. That's silly. I'll bring it to work, test it, and bring it back home a few hours later. I'll be at work just from lunch until 5 p.m. anyways. I'd put the drive in a Ziploc bag to make sure I didn't misplace it. The part I can't explain properly is how weird of a feeling I got in deciding to bring the one drive. It made no sense. It was like an inner voice telling me that I would lose it. I went back to work, tried the first oldest USB drive from my bag, and it worked. I didn't need to test the other three. I copied my file, done. But I remained paranoid for some unknown reason about losing the one thumb drive, though. My desk at work is very clean. Not much clutter, if any at all. I kept the Ziploc bag of drives on my desk for the rest of the day. At the end of the day, I made sure that I had everything. I put the Ziploc bag in my jeans pocket and drove home. When I arrived home, I immediately went to my computer room to drop off the Ziploc bag of thumb drives and put them back with my other computer stuff. I take the bag out of my pocket and see that there are three thumb drives. Guess which one is somehow missing. It doesn't seem possible to me. Am I losing my mind or being pranked? It's nowhere. I've checked everywhere many times over. Although there are literally very few places to check, it's like it never existed. The drive barely, if at all, left my sight, let alone my Ziploc bag. I practically took my work area cubicle apart for it the next day, and there's nowhere for it to go, though. It's not in my pocket. It's like I knew I was going to lose that drive and was powerless to prevent it. No matter how much I focused on not losing it in a short time span. The whole thing is super weird. Today I reordered that thumb drive from Amazon. Does that mean that I'll find the original? I actually stared up at the sky at one point and yelled, Give me my drive back! I didn't know what else to do. I, I think the Matrix has it. I often explore remote locations and old mining areas because I'm an avid rock hound. On one trip in central New Mexico, I left my hotel at 7.30 a.m. My destination was less than 30 minutes away, 10 miles by highway, 3 mile by paved road, and then 2 miles up a relatively well-maintained dirt road, followed by a three-quarter mile hike to the rock hounding spot. It was supposed to be a pretty easy trip compared to others that I have done. When I got off the highway, I decided to fill up on gas for good measure. I kept the receipt, so there's no doubt that I bought gas. About halfway up the dirt road, four miles from the gas station, I noticed my gas gauge drop to about a quarter of a tank. When I got to the area where I needed to get out and start walking, I walked a few feet and noticed a better place to leave my car, so I went back to move it. This took less than ten minutes. My car wouldn't start. The battery was dead. I still had the receipt for the battery in my glove box showing that I had purchased a new one a week prior. I checked it against the battery under the hood, and sure enough, the new battery was installed properly. Luckily, it was under warranty. The entire dirt road was uphill, and I noticed a truck driving up, so I decided to wait and ask for a jump. It was a man and a wife who were very kind, and they gave me a jump. The car started, and I moved it to the new spot. The time was 8.45 when I finally started hiking. The hike itself was uneventful and took 90 minutes. When I got back to my car, it was 10.15 a.m. I was feeling pretty hungry, so I decided to order takeout from near my hotel. I figured it would take me 30 or so minutes to get back, and the food would be ready for pickup when I got back to town. The problem was, when I put in my online order, the confirmation said that my food would be ready at 6pm. That didn't make any sense, 
so I tried calling the restaurant, but got no answer. So I decided to just drive there and ask them to prepare it ASAP. First, I was going to stop at the gas station and figure out why I didn't get the gas I paid for. I still had the receipt, and my gas tank was still at one quarter. So I drove the two miles back down that dirt road, and when I reached the end and pulled onto Frontage Road, my gas tank showed that it was full again. When I got to the restaurant ready to tell them 6pm didn't work for me, my order was already ready. And that was a relief, but it was then, picking up my order, that I looked at the time. It was 6.05pm. It should have been 10.45am. I looked at the sky and sure enough, the sun was getting low. I lost seven hours somehow and I cannot account for it. This was December 31st, 2018. I wanted to go out for the New Year's, but didn't want to make it a late night. Also, I would like to mention that this was my first New Year's living in mountain time, a time zone that is not Eastern Standard that I was used to. In my New Year's past, I watched the ball drop in New York City in real time, even if it was just on TV. So... I decided to attend a party where everyone wanted to keep it an early night. It was agreed we would watch the New York ball drop at 10pm our time, which would be midnight New York time. I only had two to three alcoholic beverages throughout the night, and I was in no way intoxicated. My boyfriend who was with me was also sober, as well as several others at the party. So those of us who were sober kept an eye out on the clock and turned on the TV to the New York simulcast around 9.45 to 9.50 p.m. It was commercial time. When the program returned, we saw Times Square in New York City. It seemed like it was taking a long time for them to check the countdown clock for the ball drop. We checked the clocks on our phones to make sure we had the right time, that we weren't looking too early or too late. 9.55pm quickly approached as we were still trying to figure out what was happening. Suddenly, we realized the ball had dropped already. We kept watching in denial that we missed it. At 11.59pm, Ryan Seacrest appeared on the screen and thanked us all for watching. The camera panned around a crowded, confetti-strewn street, credits rolled, and a new program popped up. We were befuddled, but kind of just dismissed it. I even googled it the next day to see if there was some explanation. I asked around if anyone else noticed this or could explain what happened, but nobody understood or had any answers. As we enter the new year and a new decade, those memories came back to me more vivid than ever. I asked my boyfriend and anyone who was at the party if they remembered this happening, those who were drinking remember very little detail, of course. However, my boyfriend, the party hostess, and I all remember. I think that we were the only ones sober, and were still befuddled. I decided I would share this here at this time, hoping to find some explanation, or someone else who experienced this. All I can come up with is that we experienced a glitch where we time-jumped or lost time, it feels as though at least 10 minutes just vanished, causing our early New Year to start even earlier than we planned. This could be paranormal, but I believe it could also be a glitch of times past or something. So to set the scene... My mom was out of town for the weekend, and my daughter, S, was being watched by her grandpa. We all lived together. I came home from work and her bedroom door was closed. Grandpa said that S ran into her room, saying that she thought she saw someone in our entryway library. She said, Oh, I think that's Grandma, my mom, and then ran away and closed the door behind her. 
I opened the door and she seemed happy and fine. Happy to see me. So, we eat dinner and then clean up afterwards. Grandpa comes in from taking out the trash and asks, Did you put your Amazon package on the little table by the door inside? I hadn't. I hadn't even been that way as I've always come in through the other door. And I would have brought it in with me, not left it on the little table. Grandpa had not set foot outside before taking out the trash. He's not put it there either. And he says he doesn't remember it being there before. It was also a place that neither him nor anybody else would really set it. S was being watched by either Grandpa or myself, except for when she was in her room with the door closed briefly, which is clear on the other side of the house. We were both getting pretty uneasy. How could it have gotten there? We think logically. Maybe my mom put it there before she left. Maybe the Amazon person was totally weird and snuck it inside somehow. I check Amazon to see what they have to say about the order, and they have a picture of it right outside the door on the outdoor table that they usually leave them on. They said it was delivered at 4.58pm, way after my mom had left. That was right about when Grandpa and S were in the kitchen making dinner, which has a clear enough view and is right in front of the front door. They definitely would have seen it open. It's a noisy old door with one of those insulation things at the bottom, and it's not a very big house. Really, if the door was opened in any room, you could hear it. This is what creeps me out the most, though. After S and I were alone, she told me that it wasn't Grandma in the library that she saw. It was a blurry man. She said, translated from a four-year-old, that the blurry man started off in the kitchen. She says he was at the stove, uh, cooking, but is really not sure what he was doing there. Then he drifted through the opening into the library. He went to go read a book. Then she had sort of an epiphany and was like, Oh yeah, he stole that book. She didn't realize this before, I guess, and then said that he vanished. So what do you all think this could be? I'm really just not sure what to make of it. Hey everyone, I had no idea that this thread existed, and I'm so glad that I found it, because now I have a story that maybe someone out there could relate to, and convince me that I'm not insane. So, a few years ago, I was traveling out of country to visit my dad, and we decided to go on a tour to visit this cave in his hometown. This place is absolutely ginormous, but for some reason we were the only people there that day. So we get our wristbands, and my dad reads 848. He starts laughing and just says, that was a close one. I look at him confused. And he tells me how once his father passed, before I was born, he began to see his dad's address number, 849, everywhere that he went. The lady gives me the wristband and we look down to see 849. Just a coincidence, right? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Until we sit down to wait till the tour was going to start, and my dad begins breaking into a sweat and begins panicking, losing his breath. He tells me he thinks he's going to throw up or defecate his pants. So, naturally, we run to the bathroom, where, when we got there, he turns to look at me to tell me that he'll be right back, and I step back in absolute confusion on my face. My dad's eyes had drastically changed in color. His eyes are a dark brown, and his eyes suddenly mirrored a light blue-green color. At that moment, my heart dropped to my stomach, and I knew that the person in front of me was not my father. I began to shake, backing away from him, confused as hell. 
He was frightened by the look I gave him and began to ask me what was wrong, why I'm moving away from him as he tried to get closer to me. I told him that it wasn't him. I wasn't looking at my dad, I was looking at someone else. I began crying and he claims that he ran inside the bathroom, splashed his face with cold water, and when he looked in the mirror to see himself, he saw his dad's reflection looking at him. He runs out to me just crying, saying, It's him. My dad, it's him. It was so trippy because what are you supposed to do in that situation? All we did was cry and hug each other. I never felt such a warm and safe presence. It was ever glowing. Even if my grandfather didn't actually go through my dad that day, I know he was at least there to watch us share a really insane moment. I know a lot of people don't believe in repeating numbers, but for the ones that do, I see 849 whenever I'm going through some large chapter in my life. Moving houses, getting out of a really hard relationship, meeting my partner, etc. I like to think that it's him just letting me know he's there. I'd love to know if this has ever happened to anyone else. My dad and I still talk about it to this day, and we always wonder if it was actually him that day. At the beginning of the pandemic, when testing was still being rationed, I developed symptoms. The protocol in my area was to isolate for 10 days unless you needed to go to the ER, so I had friends deliver groceries outside my door and prepared to wait my time out. My symptoms were mild, and after a few days, I looked for a project to keep me occupied. I decided to wallpaper my living room. I already had all of my supplies and removed them and my tools from the hall closet they were stored in. I put down a canvas, like a good contractor, and laid my tools out on it neatly. Before I go further, I lived in a large apartment. And no basement, no attic, no roommates. No neighbors with keys. One elderly and frail cat who, even in her youth, did not drag objects around. It was in a rather bad area, so my windows, door, and patio doors were barred. The main door was literally barricaded with a 2 by 6 piece of wood. I didn't leave and no one could enter without me removing the barricade. I laid out my materials on a canvas before bedtime, ready to use in the morning. When I was ready to start, I noticed my float slash smoother was missing. It was made of styrofoam and about two feet long, with short, soft bristles on one side for smoothing the paper down. So, it is very light, but it's not a small object. I immediately went to where it was originally stored, which was on an upper shelf in the closet. I climbed up on a ladder and used a flashlight. Nothing. I looked all over my apartment. Nothing. This really bothered me. I rarely lose things, so I did an intensive search of my apartment, each room top to bottom and left to right. I looked on my balcony and in the garbage. The only thing I could think of was that I woke up during the night and did something with it. I should mention, no ambient or alcohol or substances, no history of psychotic breaks or delusions. I wasn't anxious. I was actually enjoying my alone time. Because I was locked in my apartment and this puzzled me, I kept looking for it. For three days, I repeated my grid search, looking in all closets, under beds, everywhere. Behind the toilet, the top of the kitchen cupboards, it was as if I was on an easter egg hunt. I was obsessed. Had I been sicker than I thought? Delirious? I didn't need this thing to do my task. I found a big sponge and a white scraper and I used them instead, so the wallpaper went up regardless. But it bothered me so much. 
enough that at one point I addressed the air and said, This isn't funny anymore. Bring it back. On the fourth day, I repeated the search. I got up on a ladder, I looked on the top shelf of the hall closet, and there it was, right where it had always been stored, but not where I had left it. Nothing ever went missing this way again, and I have no explanation that doesn't involve me completely cracking up and playing the world's weirdest practical joke on myself. I have a bit of a weird story that actually happened to me this last week, and my husband was a witness to the whole thing, mostly because what I thought happened was his doing. It was the middle of the week, and usually around then my husband and I will struggle to decide what to have for dinner. Typically by Thursday we're ordering pizza because we're both tired and both ready for it to be the weekend so cooking just isn't something that we think about. The night before this happened, he and I were thinking about what to have for dinner, and he mentioned that he moved some chicken from the freezer to the fridge, and that he would come up with something in the morning for us to have. I want to note that he did not tell me what he was planning on making. He didn't even hint what he wanted to make. That morning... He actually woke up late, and he had to make a mad dash out the door so he would get to his job on time. Because of this, we didn't get to talk about what to make for dinner at all, and I was guessing that we were going to end up getting pizza or Chinese. Then, I came down the stairs, and I noticed that, on the counter, was a can of chili beans and a post-it note that said, Chili. My guess was that he left them out so that I knew that he wanted me to make chili with the chicken, which I had actually done in the slow cooker several times in the past. I got the slow cooker out, put the chicken in it, the beans, the seasoning, mixed it all up, and then set the heat and put the lid on it. By the time I got the lid on it, I went to get dressed so that I could get out to work as well. About a minute or so later... I got a text message from him saying, Hey, I think we have the stuff to make chicken chili. Would you have enough time to get that set up before you leave? I was a bit curious about the text, but at the same time, I figured that he may have just sent it to reinforce that he needed me to do it. I responded with, Yeah, I saw your note. I already got it ready. And then he responded with, What note? We went back and forth for a while, and my husband was adamant that he never left a note, and he hadn't gotten out the beans because he didn't have the time to do so. When we got home, I tried to find the note that was left, but I couldn't find it. I had left it on the counter when I left for work, but it was not there when I got home. I tried to tell him that when I had gotten downstairs... There was a can of beans and a note that said chili that I thought that he had left for me. But again, he told me several times that he did not have the time to get anything ready at all, and that when he left he barely had a minute before he was supposed to clock in. Neither of us have any idea how the beans and the note got there, nor where the hell the note went, but I'm convinced that something was telling me what to make for dinner before my husband had the idea. It was just one of those weird situations that I guess we'll never find an answer for, but... Oh well. At least the chili was really good. Okay. So, about... Three weeks ago, I started texting this guy. We hit it off and have a lot in common. Anyways, we started talking about sleep patterns and whatnot. I told him that I sleep a lot, especially when I get off work. As soon as I get home, I take a shower, and I go to sleep. He says that he's the opposite. He has trouble falling asleep to the point where he has to fall asleep with rain videos and stuff like that. 
So, I decided to tell him about Dr. Teal's spray. The one that's been all over TikTok. I've never used it, but I heard that it actually works. I decided to send him a picture of it. I go online to take a screenshot of the spray, and I even sent him the lotion that also helps to sleep. After I sent it to him, I showed my sister our text, and we talked about it for a while. We were joking, saying that we should get it just to see if it actually works, and I show her the pictures that I sent to him. Anyways, my point is that I texted him and sent him a picture of the spray. He even joked around about it, saying, Huh, imagine I spray too much and end up in a coma or something. And I was like, please don't. <laughs> so, fast forward to today, we start having this same conversation about sleep our sleeping patterns and whatnot, I'm thinking, didn't we go through this already? Because he was like, huh, I can't sleep, I have trouble sleeping. Something along those lines. I texted him back saying, I'm telling you, you need to try out that sleeping spray. And then he was like, what's that? I assumed that maybe he forgot. So I sent him a text saying, the Dr. Teal's sleeping spray, the blue bottle. And he's like, I don't know what that is. At this point, I'm so confused because I'm certain that we had this conversation before. I'm positive I sent him the screenshots of it. So I go back to our messages trying to find it. Nothing. I never delete my texts. I still have messages that go back to last year. So I was confused. I went back to my screenshots on the phone to see the pictures from that day that I had taken or screenshotted. There's nothing. I couldn't find it. I spent 34 minutes going through all of my pictures and messages, and I could not find anything regarding the stupid spray. So, I go find my sister, and I told my sister about it and asked her if she remembered, when I mentioned the sleeping spray to the guy. We joked about actually getting it, and she says, yes, why? I go on to explain everything to her, and she's freaked out. So am I. Because what the hell? I know that I didn't text it to some other guy because he was the only guy that I was talking to at that time. So I go through all my messages again, hoping that I sent it to someone else, and there's nothing. I can't find anything. Just nothing at all. As if I never had that conversation with him. I don't know what it means, but it's just insane. Because if it wasn't for my sister remembering the whole ordeal, I would have probably thought that I'm imagining things, or hallucinating. So, I'm not sure how to make sense of this mess, and no, I don't do drugs nor drink. So, I don't know what reasonable explanations I can come up with. Has anything like this ever happened to anyone else? Back in 2018, I was 17 years old and had come back from abroad to visit my friends in my home city for the winter. I remember it was the cold month of December and I was walking back to my apartment after a medical appointment with my mother when I happened to pass by this very old abandoned drama theater that was built in the 1800s, where my grandfather had temporarily worked in his youth which had been closed ever since the 90s. I recall that I hadn't been on that street for a long time, since my childhood, because I would always avoid the old drama theater buildings, as it gave me very strange vibes, so I would always take the other ways home back to the city center. However, that particular day, I happened to take that route for some unknown reason and I took that road with my mother while we discussed my upcoming exams, until she stopped me at the intersection for some odd reason and told me I was going the wrong way. At that very moment, I saw a young blonde girl sitting in a very familiar blue opal car, playing her PSP 3000 in the car. She glanced up at me to look at me all of a sudden, 
Our eyes met, and I felt an odd sense of familiarity and recollection. I froze for a bit in shock, until I heard my mother's voice and decided to quickly turn back. I went home as if nothing happened, and then realized that when I was a kid back in 2009, it was snowing, and I had seen an older teenager with highlights, makeup, and a purple winter jacket, looking at me strangely when I was in the car with my dad in the back seat, waiting for my mother to get back from the local store a few blocks away. And that's when it hit me, that this person was actually me. She too had moved away quickly after locking eyes with me when I was a kid, and she was dressed in the same attire that I was wearing in 2018. It was almost as if what happened wasn't supposed to happen. I wasn't supposed to be there on that day. Even up to this day, I'm confused. How could I possibly have seen myself from the future, and for me to remember it? I've never told anyone about it because they would just assume that I'm a delusional idiot, or something. This has been something that I haven't been able to explain to anyone. I still sometimes think about it and wonder whether I just fell asleep with my eyes open, or had hallucinated the entire event, but I recall it as blue as daylight. I've even asked my mother about the event, and she blankly stared at me saying that I acted odd that day, wanting to go back to that place for some unknown reason. I don't believe in the supernatural, but after having experienced this event, I think there's definitely something there, which we aren't aware of. I have three of these basket boxes. They're all different sizes. When I got my dog last year, I started using one of the baskets for storing his toys. It doesn't have a lid or something, so you can always see what's inside. In November, me and my boyfriend moved in together. Two households merged into one and ended up in kind of chaos. Moving boxes everywhere. You know the struggle. About a week after moving, I placed two of the baskets in the living room and also wanted to put the toy box in its new place. It was gone. We searched everywhere. The old flat, which was completely empty. The new flat. All cellars, old and new. Garages. Even my mom's house. Because I thought maybe it was transported in her car and she just took it out. Nothing. She hadn't even seen it. We tried to remember who carried it, but none of the helpers, five people in total, remembered seeing it during the move. I was so sad for my dog to have lost his toys. He's not that playful with toys, but he had his favorites that he'd not want to miss. So, after a while, we unpacked most of our stuff, and rearranged the remaining moving boxes in a small room. We even reorganized what was in the remaining boxes to clear up some space. We then only entered this room to open up the window from time to time, or to grab the vacuum cleaner. When you enter, there's like one meter of space to the left until you hit the wall. The vacuum cleaner was placed in the corner, and one box was standing next to it by the wall. Everything else was nicely arranged in the back of the room. The next months, I searched for that basket whenever I searched for the other stuff. It was, like, on my mind all the time, so I always had an eye open, just like when you're passively looking out for your child, even though you're doing other stuff. In April, we moved again. We did not put boxes in the room or removed those inside until the day that we moved, so everything was being packed where it sat. Guess what appeared halfway into bringing stuff into the new flat? Yep, the basket. Just as I remembered it, with a green and red rope lying on top of the other toys, which makes it really hard not to see it when actively looking for it. 
it was standing in front of the moving box that sat next to the vacuum cleaner all this time, just in front of it. I entered the room and I could not believe my eyes. My boyfriend either. We felt so stupid. How could we not have seen it all this time? We would have stepped over it somewhere in the range of 25,000 times. I don't get it, all the way to this day. Nobody had it. Nobody moved it. We only had guests once for Christmas which were not involved in helping us move our stuff. We even had a camera installed in the living room with a perfect view down the hallway. We would have seen if anyone had put it there. I thought about sleepwalking for some time. As I read more and more about parallel realities and stuff like that, I really believe it just glitched into another one. But what do you think? This isn't a huge glitch, but it was a glitch. I've had many glitches, but suddenly they all stopped. They quickly become a thing that I would occasionally think about, so this brings me to yesterday. I've had a great weekend with my goddaughter and her mother. We just got out of a movie. My goddaughter, only being five, felt that she deserved a treat for behaving during the long movie. So her mother, who was driving, said, sure, why not? My goddaughter pointed to a store and said, I want candy from there. I said, that's a clothing store, not a place that sells candy. Her mother said, no, they have candy as well. I laughed and said, okay, who am I to question a kid about candy? Her mother pulled over and my goddaughter and I got out and went into the store. Okay, let me explain this as detailed as possible. Most stores here in New Jersey, where I'm from, have what I call a mudroom or airlocks. I don't know the real name, but it's essentially doors to enter the store where they have carts, maybe vending machines and benches to sit on before you enter the main store. In this area, on our right, was a young man, late teens to early 20s, wearing all white, shoes, pants, shirts, everything. He looked Latino, or Native American. He had straight shoulder-length hair that was so well done that it looked fake. He was texting on his phone. So, what's the big deal, right? It just felt off. I don't know if it was his pristine appearance or just how out of place he looked. And no, it wasn't a mannequin. When I'm with my goddaughter, I'm on high alert like I'm a secret service protecting the president. I'm hyper-aware. I am very protective of her. So I thought, okay, just a kid who's very OCD about his appearance. This door has two points of entry, and exits south side and the west side. We came in the south side, where I saw the kid in white. She picked out her candy, we paid and left out of the west side. As we did, the same kid was sitting on a bench in the west side in the airlock. I paused and looked at him. Yeah, that's the same kid. Okay, maybe he was just waiting for someone and then moved to the other spot when we were inside. But my gut said something was off. So I said in a playful way, let's run to the other side where mommy is, as I was holding her hand. I just wanted to see the other spot where the kid was. And to my amazement, the same kid was still sitting there. How could he be in two different places at the same time? So, the logical explanations. Twins, waiting for someone, but why would they sit in two different places? Sure, the one sitting on the south side makes sense, it was facing the parking lot. The west side doesn't. It faces a little outside sitting area with a fountain and benches and so on. I know that this isn't a huge glitch, but what if people just don't notice this stuff and it happens all of the time? The evidence that we may be in a simulation could be around us all the time. We're just so distracted by our personal experiences that we don't stop and look around every once in a while. Maybe Ferris Bueller was right. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around every once in a while, 
you could miss the glitches. I have a short and really strange story that happened to me and my best buddy a few years ago. It's one of those things that we can explain to some extent, in that we can tell people what happened, but we have no damn clue what actually occurred. On this night, my buddy and I were going to a local baseball game. I won't say the team because it'll give away my hometown, but it's not one that typically performs well. Not that that's relevant. Anyways, we had a good time at the game, and we had quite a few drinks because we were losing. Bad. Despite this, we were not drunk. At least, I wasn't drunk. I was definitely a bit tipsy, but I don't ever drink enough to actually get wasted. But, because we were drinking, we had paid for a hotel room for us to crash in for the night, before we went to the game, so we had somewhere to go. We got an Uber to the hotel, but before we went in, my buddy mentioned that he was desperately craving a Reese's. I laughed at him like, bro, why didn't we just take the Uber to a gas station or something? And he just shrugged and told me that we needed to go get a Reese's before we went to bed. I again was laughing at him, but said, screw it and pointed down the way to where there was a convenience store. We went to the store, and we got our Reese's, and then we started back to the hotel. And that's when the glitch happened. We walked out of the convenience store, and he stopped to open his candy, and it looked like the sky went from pitch black to as bright as the middle of the day for about half a second. It was as if someone had flicked the switch on to the sky for just a moment, and then immediately flicked it back off. Like, it went from black to bright blue back to black. It was the weirdest thing, but we both just kind of stood there for a moment and stared at the sky. I'm sure we looked like we were out of our minds just staring upwards. When it happened, we both completely sobered up. Like, 100% completely went from a bit tipsy to completely sober. It was super weird, and neither of us said anything to the other person, though we knew that we both saw it happen. We just walked back to the hotel and didn't say a single word. The next morning, I tried to bring it up, but he was pretty much just dismissive of it, saying, yeah, it was weird. That was it. To the best of my knowledge, the two of us are the only ones that saw it happen, and there's no way to explain it beyond what I said earlier. It was super weird and kind of creepy, but that's about it. Nothing like it has ever happened again, and I've only read a few stories that were kind of similar, but not quite the same thing. Though, if anyone has ever had an experience like this or has a better explanation than the Matrix glitched, I would love to hear it. I have a pretty mundane glitch that was actually kind of creepy, and something about it was seriously unsettling, but I'm not really sure what the heck it was or what it was about. What's worse, it wasn't just me that experienced it. My boyfriend also saw the whole thing play out. It actually happened just the other day, so the whole thing is still pretty fresh in my memory. I was downstairs in the laundry room, trying to fill the washing machine with the load of laundry, and when I got to the end of the current basket, I determined that there was a bit more space left in the machine. I yelled at my boyfriend to bring down another basket so I could finish filling it. He runs up to grab one, and then rushes back downstairs to get it to me. I start loading the clothing into the machine, and I get it all filled up. And as soon as I closed the lid on the machine, the light in the laundry room seemed to go out. 
I kind of screamed as it scared me, mostly because of the timing, and my boyfriend just laughed at me, mentioning that the breaker must have tripped or something. I asked him to go check, and he then went over to where the switch was, and commented that it had been flipped to the off position. That was obviously weird, as we were both there by the washing machine, but it wasn't a huge deal. I thought maybe I just didn't flip it all the way on, and the timing was impeccable. Then it got weird. My boyfriend flipped the switch back to the on position, and as soon as the light clicked on, the room was filled with the brightest flash of light that I have ever seen. It was as if someone had taken the flash from one of those Kodak cameras and turned it up to 11. What was weirder was that it wasn't just a flash and then it was gone. It was a bright flash and then it was like it was fading in slow motion. Like it was dialed up and then someone was slowly turning it back down. As the light faded, I saw what looked like silhouettes of a person walking from the door to the washing machine and then saw them loading what looked like clothing into said washing machine. And then I saw a second silhouette walking back down with another basket of clothing. It took me a few moments to realize what I had seen, but I was basically watching what had just happened in some sort of detailless playback form. After a few seconds, the whole thing played out and it was over, and then the light was gone. I just stood there staring at the room and then looked over to my boyfriend, but the look on his face screamed what I was thinking. I asked him if he had just seen what I saw, and he just kind of nodded like, yep, let's not talk about it ever. I said okay, checked to make sure the washer had kicked on, and then walked toward the door to go back upstairs. We both went up and just didn't talk about the freaky event that we had both witnessed. Unfortunately, that's the whole story. We both saw this play out and haven't really discussed it because it was weird, and neither one of us has seen anything like it since. The laundry got done as normal, if anyone cares, and the basement still feels like a completely normal room. I have no idea what that was, but if anyone has any thoughts, please do feel free to share them.